All right, next thing we're gonna get is Windows. There's several websites we can get Windows from, but specifically we're gonna be getting a modified version of Windows that has a lot of the apps and bloatware that Microsoft forces upon consumers into their operating system that actually slows it down. By removing all these apps and programs that Microsoft forces on their consumers, it speeds up the operating system significantly. Okay, we're talking about removing the Microsoft Store, Cortana, Xbox Game Bar, Windows Defender. There's other programs that actually slow down the operating system. But don't be scared. Believe it or not, the guy that created the modified version of this Windows actually has a separate program that you can double click on and run from the desktop and reinstall those apps if you actually need them. Don't freak out if, oh no, if there's no Microsoft Store and Xbox Game Bar or anything like that, then why would I want it and stuff like that? I do want those things. Well, you can install them later. He has a way to allow you to do so. So the guy I'm talking about is called Ghost Spectre. Spelled as you can see here. Actually, I spelled it completely fucking wrong. <laughs> now, it's going to be directly on his YouTube channel, so make sure you go under so YouTube dash and then Ghost Spectre all in caps. That's how you know it's the correct channel. All right, so his YouTube channel can get kind of confusing, but basically once you're at youtube.com forward slash ghost specter, then you'll click on videos, the video tab right here under his name, and then you'll click on sort by on the right hand side and make sure date added newest is selected, okay? That way you have the most up to date videos selected. Now, why are we going through videos on a YouTube channel? Well, this is how we're going to get our Windows 11 download link or Windows 10 download link okay the modified version of Windows 11 or Windows 10 you know what I'm saying now if you do not want any modified version of Windows 10 or Windows 11 then you can always go straight to Microsoft.com and Microsoft releases their own ISO digital Windows installation discs okay you can get them straight from there there's also torrents and stuff like that too I don't condone piracy but you can go through that avenue as well but anyways, since we're getting the modified version of Windows 10 or Windows 11, we're going through Ghost Spectre's modified version of it. So anyways, so unfortunately, what you usually would have to do is you have to click on each one of these fucking videos and then go into the video description of these videos to find the most recent download links, okay, to Windows 10 or Windows 11. However, I did all the dirty work for you. You're welcome. But just keep in mind that he might release more up-to-date videos on his channel having more up-to-date Windows 10 or Windows 11 links. Obviously after this video right here. So if he does, then just like I said, keep an eye on it and see if he has more up-to-date links through those videos instead if he, you know, posts those. But usually what he usually does is he'll... Once he releases an update to Windows 10 or Windows 11, he'll replace the older links with the newer links and then do that replacing in the older videos that already contain the Windows 11 and Windows 10 links. Also keep in mind that you do not necessarily have to get the most recent, most up-to-date Windows 10 or Windows 11 because you can always use Windows updates. The whole point of getting the most up-to-date and most recent Windows 10 or Windows 11 version is the fact that the most recent versions will have the Windows updates wrapped up into them before you install it to your new computer. That way, you'll have less Windows updates that you'll have to download and install. If you get an older version of Windows 10 or Windows 11, then you might have 50 or 60 fucking Windows updates you'll have to install after you just install Windows to your newly built computer. But if you get the most recent and the most up-to-date possible of Windows 10 or Windows 11, you might have five or six or less Windows updates you have to download and install. See what I'm saying? It just, it just helps with time and stuff like that. Anyways, like I said, I'll, I'll do the heavy lifting for you. The most recent links for Windows 11. Windows 11 would be this video right here. So Windows 11 versus Windows 10. To get the most up-to-date Windows 11 ISO file, would get it from this video. And then to get the most up-to-date Windows 10 ISO file, if you want Windows 10 instead, you'll get it from this video right here. Gaming comparison 21H1 and 20H2. 
That's why I said sometimes it gets confusing because the titles are completely different. One's game in comparison and the other one's Windows 11. You would think, oh, this has Windows 11 versus Windows 10. It should have Windows 11 and Windows 10 in it. Links to both of them and it doesn't. The Windows 11 versus Windows 10 only has Windows 11 download links. So to get the Windows 10, if you Windows 10 instead, you have to go to this video right here. I already have them both pulled up and I'll also put in my video description of this video Okay, this video you're watching, in my video description, I'll put links directly to his YouTube videos here as well. Windows 10, it would be the gaming comparison one here, and I already have that one pulled up, so once you go to the that YouTube watch page of that video for Windows 10, you scroll down and click on show more, and then scroll down again, and then right here, times 86 architecture, that'd be your 32-bit, a 32-bit version, and then times 64, 64-bit version for Windows 10. He also has an enterprise version there too, if you want that instead. Then, of course, the Windows 11 version right here would be under this video. Like I said, the Windows 11 versus Windows 10 is this video. And then, same thing, click on show more, we scroll down from the video, and then right here. Unfortunately, Windows 11 only has 64-bit versions. Yeah, and you got Pro and Home. For gamers, streamers, and content creators, and stuff like that, you want to get the Pro version. If you're building a computer for Grandma and Grandpa, they're clearly not going to be doing all this type of shit. Not trying to be uh, stereotypical. I'm sure there's Grandma and Grandpas that play video games as well, but just saying. Whatever that may be. If they're not doing a lot, then you can just get home. Pro. So click on Pro. The link here. Keep this tab open. Okay, whatever video you go to to get whatever Windows version from him, keep the tab open because you are gonna need these passwords. Sometimes he provides passwords that you're gonna need to even access the download at all. Other times he also has passwords to even extract the ISO out of what you're downloading. I'll show you what I mean in a minute. Okay, so we're gonna click on this link for like I said, the pro version update five, and it's gonna go to this page here. I'm assuming it's his website. There's gonna be a video that pops up, hurry up and just pause it and scroll down here and it's right here, see? March 16th, 2022. So it's fairly recent. And you scroll down here, there's actually two different versions of Windows you can install. Now, you can only install one of these, but it's trial and error. I've had a situation where one of them did not boot from my USB flash drive, but the other one did. Now let me explain what the difference between the two are. Normal bootable is like any other Windows installation disk. You put it in, you change what's called boot priorities in your BIOS, and I'll show you that in a little bit, and then you restart the computer, and it goes straight into the Windows installation process. Custom bootable, on the other hand, has programs you can run optionally before you can even want to start the Windows installation process. For example, as soon as you boot up the Windows installation, it will go into a screen and have like three things at the bottom you can click on. You can actually run Notepad, Command Prompt, a partition manager for your hard drives, or aka SSDs, and other cool programs you can run before even starting the Windows installation process, which is fucking cool. Okay. For example, there might be a situation where you bought your hard drive, but it needs to be formatted first, but your computer can't recognize it. So usually you're going to have to take the hard drive out of the fucking computer, put it into another computer and the inside of that computer with a SATA cable or whatever. Then within Windows, use the device manager, a hard drive manager, whatever, and create a partition, all that shit. Then take it out of that computer, then put it back into your build that you you know, you built just so the Windows installation can recognize it and read it. That's happened to me before. Usually though, you, you might not have to worry about that, especially if it's a brand new drive you just bought in the store. And I'm not going to say they're already formatted, but they're usually already like partitioned, if that makes sense. They usually are read by the Windows installation right then and there. Based on what I'm trying to say. But I'm just saying, sometimes you might have a used hard drive from someone else's computer. They gave you or something. You want to put it in your build for an extra hard drive for extra space or something. You know what I'm saying? And Windows might not read it. Okay? And I'll not going to show that later. But anyway, so in situations like that, with the custom bootable ISO, you can actually run a partition program ahead of time to format or partition the hard drive. Then after you do that, then you can click on Windows Setup. 
and actually then proceed to start installing Windows. So that's what I like, and that's me personally. So that's what I'm getting. Now, you might see, you know, there's update 5, update 4, update 3, update 2, whatever. You can only install the most up to date one. Unfortunately, every time he releases an update, he replaces the previous one. So whatever the uh, most up to date one is, that's the one you're going to be getting. So anyways, like I said, we're going to get the custom bootable one or click on the media fire link. Again, like I said, just in case, okay, pause this video here, it pops up, just in case, sometimes some links, as soon as you click on this blue down the link, it'll pop up a password box right on the website and he gives you what the password is in the YouTube video description to access the actual download. Sometimes he does that. Just letting you know that ahead of time, okay? For this one, he didn't, so we're good. Click on download, blue down the link, and it's gonna go straight to Mediafire, bam, and right here, the blue down the link. It's gonna click on it, and then we're gonna save it. I already had it saved, downloads, but I'm gonna do it again anyway, because I did delete it earlier. <laughs> All right, so now we have it downloaded. I downloaded it to my downloads folder, so we're gonna go into my downloads folder. And as you see, it's right here. It says a .03162022 file. Sometimes his downloads is a .7 sign file, which is really weird, or .7 zip, whatever he decides, I guess. Now, if you don't have the extension of the file that it is, then all you gotta do is on your friend's computer or your spare computer, whatever you're using, download the ISO and your drivers and BIOS update and all that stuff from, then you need to go under your control panel, find a control panel, and then click on file explore options. If it doesn't look like this, just go under view by large icons, and then click on file explore options, click on the view tab, and then right here under hide extensions for known file types, make sure this is unchecked, unchecked. And what this does, it just puts the, you know, dot .exe, dot .zip, or dot .mp3, dot .mp4. You know, it puts the actual, what the file is, at the end of the file name for you. So you know exactly what it is. We already know that this is a 03162022, whatever the fuck that is. Alright, next thing we have to do is we need to download two different programs. Now, before we do this, make sure that you have a USB flash drive. And if you haven't already noticed, you're going to need a separate computer, obviously, as well, to be able to, well, put the Windows setup on a USB flash drive. And, as well as get all your drivers and stuff like that, and BIOS update, and stuff like that as well. Also, keep in mind, when we install the Windows setup to it... It's going to literally, well, delete everything off of that USB flash drive. So make sure that you back up anything that's important on the flash drive you're using to another flash drive or another computer before proceeding with that step when we get to it. So anyways, the first program we need to download is called 7-Zip. So just type in the number 7, then zip. And then right here, it's under 7-zip.org. You click on the download. And right here you have the download links. Now there's 64-bit Windows, 32-bit Windows. If you do not know what Windows bit you're using, then there's two different ways. A, under Start Menu, if you have the older Start Menu. Well, I'm sure the newer Start Menus will be the same way, but finding this PC, computer on my computer, all, different Windows, it's labeled different, but it's the same fucking thing. The desktop sometimes has an icon that says My Computer or just says computer or says this PC, whatever. Find the icon or find the words, this PC, my computer or computer, and then right click on it and then click on properties. Again, right click on it and then click on properties. And it'll tell you right there, system type 64-bit operating system. Now, of course, if that's too confusing or you can't figure out how to get to that, there is another way, and this should work for all Windows versions. Under the Start menu, with the Search portion, just type in MSinfo32. So MS stands for Microsoft Info, obviously, information. So Microsoft Info 32. I don't know why there's a fucking number after it for the command, but whatever. So msinfo32.exe. So you either click on it or hit enter after you type it in, and it should pop up with this here. It's system information, and right there, system type, time 64 base PC. So this also will be how, if you ever need to know what drivers you need, then you can find it under, most of the time, you can find it under system model or under baseboard product. 
and you can find your model number on uh, for your motherboard specifically under this as well and then that way you can just google this model number what a motherboard you're using and then you can get the drivers off the main uh, manufacturer's website okay but we'll get to that in a little bit so anyways 64 bit so click on download and install that and then you're done okay so now once you got sevens up installed the next program we need to download is called rufus r-u-f-u-s or you can type in rufus download whatever okay and then it should be under rufus.ie that's the website so let's go ahead and click on it and it should be right here and scroll down under download the last updated one we're going to click on here, so Rufus 3.18, click on that, save that. Now the cool thing about this program is the fact that this runs as is. So you click on run when you try to run it, and bam, you do not have to install it to your computer. So now, again, you should have 7-Zip installed to your computer, and you should have Rufus downloaded, and you should also have your ISO for Windows 10 or 11 downloaded as well right here but it should be in a dot zero three one whatever the fuck it is okay <laughs> it'd be a weird file or it might be seven sign or actually it might be dot seven zip whatever okay since you have seven zip extracted all you have to do is right click on it and seven zip should be on your this is called a context menu when you right click it brings up a menu so right click right on it the windows 10 and windows 11 file you downloaded okay from ghost specter right click on that highlight under 7-zip you don't want to click on it but just highlight it and now drop down over there and click on extract files so click on extract files hit ok and i'll imagine that enter password what i tell you guys do earlier keep the youtube video description tabs open that when you downloaded this so I got the Windows 11, the Windows 11 ISO download from that one video I told you about right here, this one, Windows 11, go to that video, then under its video description, I click on time 64 because my computer system is time 64, the motherboard is. Lo and behold, oh, imagine that. So under Pro Update 5, that's the one we got, yep, right there, Pro Update 5 right there, this is the password we need, so highlight that, copy put that into password paste it hit ok and as you can see right there dot iso and that's what we need now we have our now we can delete this we don't need it no more turn it into a folder and lo and behold there is our iso file now let's proceed to the next step all right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take our flash drive. The one I'm using is a 32 gigabyte flash drive. We're gonna take it and we're gonna plug it into our USB port of the computer we're using to download you know, all of our stuff and the Windows setup to, to install to our actual new computer build. I plugged it in, let's go, just exile this. I already had Windows set up installed to it, but I'm gonna re-put the Windows installation to it. So now we are going to bring up Rufus. So double click on Rufus here, click on run. And as you can see here, okay, device, make sure that it is your flash drive that's selected. If you're not sure, all you have to do is under, you know, this PC, this computer or computer or my computer, whatever it's labeled as, it should be under, they're called drive letters. Here's a disk drive. These are two different hard drives here. So C drive, D drive, and then my USB flash drive is gonna be the F drive. You'll know because if you unplug your flash drive, as you see, it goes away. So if you have, especially if you have that window open, uh, like I said, this PC, my computer or computer, and then once you plug it back in, obviously, then it should pop back up again. See? We know it's the F drive, so, so right here under F drive and then boot selection disk or ISO, keep that there. I'm going to click on select and then as you can see under the downloads where we downloaded Ghost Spectre's file from and that we extracted earlier into folder format, we're going to click on that folder and then there's the ISO file right there that we need to install Windows with. Double click on that ISO file and then image option, keep that standard in Windows installation. Partition scheme, keep it at GPT. Target system, keep it at UEFI. 
and you're, you can't select anything else for the UFI. Now, target system usually depends on the ISO you're using. So for example, if let's just say you're wanting to install Windows 7, then this target system might allow you to change it from UEFI to BIOS. I don't want to confuse you what the fuck it means, but UEFI is technically the same thing as BIOS. It's just a more secured version of a BIOS uh, for motherboards nowadays, okay? So let's get to it. So format options, volume label. This is what it's going to pop up as whenever you plug into a computer. So as I shown earlier, as soon as I popped it in, it said this right here, W11 Pro G S322, right? Whatever you put right here is what it's going to change that. You can put it as pussy if you want. <laughs> it doesn't matter what you name it. Fuck it, whatever. And then file system FAT32. You don't have to change this unless your ISO file is bigger than 4 gigs. So that ISO that you downloaded earlier, the Windows installation, okay? If you just hover over it, right here it says size 3.22. If that's under 4.00, okay, then you can keep it at FAT32. If the ISO you downloaded for, you know, your Windows that you're getting is bigger than 4.00, then change this file system to NTFS. Alrighty then, cluster size, keep it at default, whatever the fuck it's at. Alrighty then. And all we gotta do is from here is click on start. Okay, warning all data on the device will be destroyed. It's just saying that it's going to delete everything off the flash drive to be able to put the Windows setup onto it. So we already know that, so click on OK. When this is done, you'll see right here under status, this green bar will be all the way to the very right hand side. And then instead of black words right here, it will be a white word that says ready. Now this process right here can take anywhere from five minutes to 30 or 40 minutes, depending on how fast the computer you're putting the Windows set up from it to the flash drive is. So we're gonna come back to this when this is done. All right, so as you see here, like I said, ready and white over the green bar, it's done. And it took 13 minutes and 10 seconds. So now all we have to do is click on close. Next thing we're gonna do, and we're gonna go ahead and do, believe it or not, it is not going to hurt the Windows installation or mess up the Windows installation or stop the BIOS from detecting the USB flash drive at all whatsoever. But what we're gonna do is we're going to open the flash drive up by double clicking on it within my computer, this PC, computer, whatever, you know, like I said, whatever computer you're using. And then what we're going to do within this is we're going to right click in an empty space and then hover over new folder. Okay. And we're going to name this drivers. Okay. All in capital letters. And then we're going to do the same thing again. Right click an empty space, hover over new folder. And we're going to name this BIOS. And the reason why I want you guys to do this is because we can get all of our drivers for our brand new motherboard and our brand new computer build now. Okay, we can get the drivers now and we can also get the BIOS update if there is a BIOS update for the motherboard now. That way we can update the BIOS before we install Windows as well as after we install Windows we can just keep the flash drive plugged in to the new computer and just drag and drop all the drivers off of the flash drive to our new computer and install our drivers to it and make it so much easier for you guys. Why would this not hurt the Windows installation setup? Well, believe it or not, the Windows installation files on this flash drive here that we just installed with Rufus has certain files, kind of like INI files, if you ever heard of those. They're basically system configuration files that say, hey, look computer, only use these files and these folders to install with. So basically by us adding a drivers folder and a BIOS folder is going to do nothing to the rest of this, okay? Because the rest of this that's highlighted here is the actual Windows installation. Computers are smart. It knows, hey, we don't care about these other folders. It has nothing to do with the Windows installation. We're only gonna be using these right here. With that being said, our motherboard that we got from PC Part Picker, or that we bought, is a MSI X570S Edge Max. So MSI X570S 
Edge Max Wi-Fi, okay? And we're going to, under msi.com here, we're gonna click on it, and we're gonna click on support the top, and then under drivers and downloads right here, BIOS, okay? Of course, every manufacturer's websites lay out differently for their motherboards. But anyway, you click on BIOS, and the most up-to-date one they have is this one right here. Click on download for the BIOS, and then we're gonna download it straight to the flash drive. Okay, so right here, and then under BIOS. Okay, so save it directly. Let's go back to the flash drive again. BIOS folder that we created earlier, and lo and behold, there's the BIOS. Now, we have to actually extract the BIOS file out of it to update the BIOS of our motherboard. So you'll have to right click on this. You can use 7-zip because it's faster than Windows extraction utility. So under 7-zip and then click on extract files and then click on OK. Of course it's going to be a little bit slower because I'm extracting it right on the USB flash drive which is slower than an SSD drive. If I would be extracting this on my computer itself on the SSD drive it would have been done within one or two seconds. <laughs> But anyways, uh, delete the zip file, and then right here it's a folder and another folder, <laughs> same folder, and you got a text document that just lets you know, hey, this is this release, and it has these fixes and yada yada yada, and then there's other languages too if they want, if the manufacturer wanted to add that further motherboard but most BIOS updates files are going to be in number format so and it's only going to be one BIOS update file I don't know why I said files I was just saying like in general like all update files you ever download with the BIOS is going to have a numbered extension at the end of the file name so for this motherboard it's a 124 file so this is the only one we need we're going to just cut this or you can right click and cut it I just held control and pressed X and then we're going to put it directly in the root of the BIOS folder and then paste it by holding control and pressing V and then we're going to actually delete the folder itself. All right. So there we go. So now if we go straight on to our USB Windows setup flash drive, as soon as you double click on it and you go into the BIOS for it created earlier and now it has the actual BIOS file instead of the BIOS file inside of a zip folder. The BIOS ain't going to be able to read the BIOS update unless it's extracted out of the zip file. So like, again, make sure to extract it and put it directly into the BIOS folder as I just did. Okay. Alrighty then. So BIOS is done. Next thing we need to get is our actual drivers to our motherboard. So so click on driver and make sure to select the correct Windows version we're using. It's going to be Windows 11, 64. You need to get the chipset driver no matter what. And the reason why is because it updates the USB ports of your computer, the Ethernet port of your computer, and all of the communication ports basically all together of your computer the last thing you want to do is when you install windows and you like plug in an external usb drive to your computer and it says it's going to take like 10 hours to copy something over when you're only copying like one mp3 file over you'll have weird shit like that so to keep that shit from happening you need to install the chipset drivers so it actually updates the USB ports and Ethernet ports and, like I said, everything that the motherboard has and that it communicates with. That way, you do not run into weird-ass fucking issues that, you know, like that. That's what, from what I've noticed. I've ran into mainly USB port problems. Make sure to get those. We're going to download those real quick. We're going to download those in the driver. Drivers folder. You know, of our USB uh, Windows installation flash drive. So, drivers folder. Save that there. Onboard VGA drivers. We do not need this if you are running NVIDIA graphics card. However, if you're not running a graphics card at all, if you're one of those basic bitches, if you're just running a quad-core, dual-core processor that has integrated graphics, again, that's only powerful enough to give you a display and only powerful enough to let you play like 2D games like, you know, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Atari, Farmville, Pop It, and web-based games, then go ahead and get the onboard VGA drivers because these can help with the integrated graphics of your quad-core, dual-core processor. 
processor. But if you're running an NVIDIA graphics card, then don't worry about this at all. If you're running a Radeon graphics card, I guess go ahead and install it. And if you're not running any graphics card at all, then you can also install it as well. All right, so onboard audio drivers, every motherboard's gonna be different. Just read about them and read the title of them and see what the fuck they are and go from there. So the Realtek, drivers you download that one download that one the drivers land drivers you're definitely gonna need those or else you might not have internet at all on your computer <laughs> so that's required some desktop computers are wireless and i showed that earlier this motherboard is wireless for this desktop i can turn my desktop computer into a wireless fucking computer for the internet so i can download both these one for the wi-fi and the other one just for the ethernet cable directly to my modem so i can download both of these drivers folder same thing here drivers folder then the onboard sata drivers now i don't need those because there's only one driver and it's the raid driver now i'm not using raid so i don't need that driver so our firmware see if there's anything else we might need lead firmware improve rgb light performance and eh, i don't really care about that right now and then utilities, now it does say Windows 64, 1064, you might still be able to download these for Windows 11, I'm not entirely sure, but these also aren't really required. Again, just read them all and see what you need, but you definitely need to make sure to get most of your drivers under the driver tab and your BIOS as I just shown, okay, okay. All right, next thing we need to do to make sure nothing is corrupted on the USB flash drive that we just downloaded our uh, Windows setup to or installed our Windows setup to and downloaded our BIOS update to as well as all of our drivers for our motherboard specifically to when you click on the arrow at the bottom right hand side here under show hidden icons or if it's showed or whatever, right, anywhere else, then you click on the flash drive icon and click on, well, eject it. Basically, safely remove. Safely remove your USB flash drive. And now we are ready to actually plug it into our newly created build and boot into the BIOS. All right, now this is a computer by computer basis, but what you need to do is when you turn your computer on, you have to pay attention to what pops up on the computer screen on what key to press to get into the BIOS. It'll actually tell you right at the very, very bottom of the screen, okay? So I'm going to hit the power button, and again, you got to pay attention. So let's see what it pops up and says... Okay, so it was kind of fast, but it showed at the bottom middle of the screen, it said what key to press to go into the BIOS. Most motherboards nowadays, it's mostly the delete key. Some older motherboards, it might be F4, it might be F12, it might be F10, okay? Just, if your computer boots up too fast, then you're just gonna have to, I guess, keep restarting it until you can catch it. You have to see what key you have to press to get in the BIOS. So the computer here in the bedroom as example, if I press the power button when it's turned completely off, press the power button, it's connected to my flat screen TV in the bedroom via HDMI port, um, plugged in directly into my graphics card and as you can see, bam, delete BIOS setup. Okay, the inner system information, boot menu, whatever it says for BIOS, you hit that key and you'll hit it over and over and over and over again to get into it. If you didn't catch it and it goes straight into whatever it goes into, let's say you already have Windows installed on the hard drive, but you're wanting to reinstall Windows to it, right? If it goes straight into the Windows logon screen, then you're gonna have to go to the power button again and hold it down until it turns completely off. Again, you remember what it said on the bottom left-hand side. It said the delete key to go to the BIOS. So, as soon as we press the power button on this computer, we're going to hit the delete key over and over and over and over and over again. So, ready, set, go. And we keep hitting the delete key over and over and over and over and over again. Because right there, BIOS setup, delete key. So, keep hitting the delete key over and over and over again. And there you go, go straight into the BIOS. And that's basically what we're gonna do with our newly built computer here. But instead, we're gonna actually have our USB flash drive that has the Windows setup on it, our BIOS update, and all of our drivers on it plugged into one of the USB ports before we go into the BIOS, okay? 
So we're just going to plug it right into there. And then we're going to hold the power button to turn it completely off. Okay. And on this computer, it showed on my monitor when I very first boot up this computer for the very first time it was the delete key as well to go into the bios for this motherboard for this computer so again we're gonna hit the power button with the usb flash drive plugged in that has the window set up into it right as soon as we hit the power button we're gonna hit the delete key over and over and over again okay this is a wireless keyboard so i gotta make sure it's on so hit the power button and as soon as it turns on we're gonna hit delete over and over and over again with the flash drive plugged in that has the window set up on it. Okay? Delete, 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 all right, now that we are in the BIOS, since we plugged in the USB flash drive to the computer that we built, we need to update the BIOS. Now, depending on your motherboard, just find where to flash the BIOS. It could be named anything. MSI usually calls theirs M flash. I'm actually in the way here, but on the bottom left-hand side, as you can see, ooh, as you can see, uh, uh, right there, use USB. B to flash BIOS M flash. Every motherboard's different. They might call theirs completely different. And they might just say click here to flash. But I don't know. Like I said, I don't know what brand motherboard you got. But find how to flash the BIOS from the a USB flash drive. The option for that. So mine's M flash. We're gonna click on that first. So the system will auto reboot and enter flash mode. Do you want to enter flash mode? Duh. Yeah, we need to update the BIOS. <laughs> so yes. And obviously now we have to find our USB flash drive. We're gonna click on that, obviously. But it's already selected on the under drive, right? And then over here, <gasps> did I did I tell you guys in the previous section to create your own folder and name it BIOS and put the BIOS file into this folder? I'm sure you remember that. If you don't remember that, then <laughs> go back to that timestamp. But anyways, you click on BIOS here, uh, which is the folder. It says D-I-R. Stands for directory, a.k.a. your folder. So BIOS folder and bam. Imagine that. There is our BIOS file. E7D53AMS.124. And look at this. Wow. It's a good thing uh, I'm updating the BIOS anyways. Because look. Look how outdated it is. The last uh, BIOS was... December 27th, and this one is way more recent. So, we're going to click on this. Is there, are you sure when you select this? Well, yeah, it's the BIOS update. Hit yes, and you'll probably notice that it even tells you you cannot use your uh, keyboard or mouse uh, at all during this process. And there's a meter at the bottom. So, yeah, from version 1.10 to version 1.24. Move this out of the way. You can see that other stuff at the bottom there Ooh. so yeah there it shows the cpu temperature what it's at currently at of course your cpu fan but it might have trouble with the cpu fan finding it out because well we have a liquid cpu cooler installed so well within this section i don't think it can actually detect the rpm fan speeds of the liquid cpu cooler all right so when it restarts itself it might restart itself a few times. Be patient. If you already had Windows installed on it, then it might reboot right into Windows. Either way, like I said, just give it a minute. And then what we're going to have to do is we might have to hold the power button down to shut the computer off again. But we're going to wait a minute and see what it's going to boot into first. We're going to see if it boosts right into the BIOS or if it's going to go into because uh, I, I did have Windows installed to this already. Yeah. Yep. So, okay, so hold the power button in on the tower of your computer you built. All right. Now we're going to, again, like I did at the beginning of this section, press the power button again. And as soon as you do it, keep pressing delete. Delete, 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 can you hear me now? There we go. Okay. Now, so 
since we updated the BIOS, as you can see, BIOS build date should be the, the most recent one. So now we're good on the BIOS. Next thing we need to do is we need to go into uh, your sections. I like to go to advanced because it just it lays out the BIOS better, in my opinion. Try to go to advanced and follow along. Go to advance and then click on settings on the left hand side again. Your BIOS might be set up differently. Like then just follow along and go to your settings, however you go to your settings. So go to your regular settings. And then what we need to do to install Windows, we need to first turn off what's called secure boot and fast boot. We have to turn both of those off. Otherwise, the computer might not detect our USB flash drive or Windows installation disk, whatever you're using to install Windows with, okay? There's a reason why it's called Secure Boot. So when you're trying to boot from an installation disk to replace the operating system, it won't let you do it. Uh, there might be other reasons why it's called secure boot and might be other things that is used for, but either way we have to turn it off. So again, in the settings, mine is going to be under advanced. Now it's not going to be under boot. It's going to be under advanced. And then I believe it's under maybe windows. Yep. Windows OS configure it. Yep. That's it. So settings, advanced windows OS configuration, and then right there, secure boot. And it is disabled already. Sweet. So just make sure this is disabled. And then find fast boot. If you can't find it, then your computer probably just doesn't have it. Power management. Okay, no. USB configuration. No, it's not there either. Integrated peripherals. Nope, not there either. ACPI. Nope, not there either. Overclocking settings. So it says you just gotta search through it all and find, see where it's at. Okay, so yeah, this motherboard does not have fast boot. So, anyways, so we're good on that. Next thing we need to do, and this is the fun part, this is how we're going to install Windows, is the boot priority at the top. Now, some motherboards have the thing at the top, the boot priority list at the top. Some motherboards do not. Some motherboards, you have to actually go into settings, then you have to go into boot and stuff like that. And then right here, fixed boot order priorities, and you got to change them from the list, okay? Now, why is this important? Well, we need to make the computer boot the Windows setup from the flash drive. If we have other stuff to boot first, it's gonna boot those devices first. So for example, you might have Windows already installed on your hard drive, right? Well, if you have under number one, the first device that boots up, the hard drive, which <laughs> mine it is, because they actually that SSD when I had Windows installed too. If you have boot option number one as the SSD that has Windows on it, what's going to happen as soon as you turn on the computer, it's going to go straight into Windows. But we're trying to reinstall Windows. See my point? We're trying to install a new version of Windows. So we need to change. We can either change it here or, like I said, up here, which I find the top here much easier. But it's whatever you prefer. Like I said, some other board BIOSes only allow you to use the keyboard. Wrong keyboard. Yep. Keyboard up and down arrows and then press enter and then you uh, press enter again. Like I said, it tells you right there at the bottom right hand corner how to, you know, move with the key. Select stuff with the keyboard, stuff like that. But this has mouse support, so I just use the mouse to select everything. We, could, we need to change boot option number one to our flash drive. Quick edit here. I want to let you guys know if you built your computer with an internal Blu-ray slash CD slash DVD reader and writer drive and you have a Windows installation disk instead and you're wanting to install Windows from a disk instead of the USB flash drive method that we're using in this video then you need to change boot option number one to your CD slash DVD drive. Again we're trying to boot into the Windows setup so if you're using a Windows disk and you have that into a CD and DVD or Blu-ray drive of your newly built computer, then you need to switch boot option number one to that disk drive so it will boot straight into the Windows setup off the Windows disk. It should be labeled under the brand name of your flash drive as well as it'll say partition one. And the reason why it sh it'll say partition one is because the Windows setup is on it. And it's installed as a partition on the flash drive. It's really fucking weird. So you can either select it there, okay? Um, or like I said, up here. And But as you can see, I already, as soon as I switched it there, it switched it up there. That's why I said it doesn't really matter. Most of you might use the settings and then boot and then do it that way. 
most of you as in likes, if you, especially if you're using other, older motherboards, there is no list, of the, a boot priority list at the top here you can uh, change as soon as you go into the BIOS. You have to actually go into the uh, system uh, settings and then boot options to change it there. But you get a general idea. So like I said, just either, you can either change it in the boot settings of your BIOS and change it to your flash drive or you can change it up here and you just with the a mouse if your bio supports mouse support uh, and then just drag it all the way the, to the very 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 left hand side saying hey look this is what I'm going going to be booting first the next thing we need to do ahead of time and this also depends on the graphics card you have a graphics card installed if you're a gamer and streamer or content creator then chances are you'll you have a graphics card installed but either way depend on the graphics card we need to go ahead now and enable what's called and it's new somewhat if your motherboard supports it called rebar support on this motherboard we need to do is we need to go into advanced then pci subsystem settings okay right there resize bar support and what this does, it tells you on the right hand side over there, AMD Smart Access Memory Technology Requirement, it's if system supports 64-bit decoding, which it does, you know, depends on your hardware, obviously, your graphics card processor, all that stuff. What it basically does, it doesn't actually tell you in that description, just tells you that it's a technology requirement for Smart Access Memory, supposedly. But what it actually does, it does speed up your graphics card. Uh, it'd be wise to enable it if your motherboard has it and if your graphics card supports it. So turn that on, we're going to enable that and it'll automatically also enable above 4G memory and cryptocurrency mining, which is good because, well, you need performance when you're trying to Bitcoin mine and, uh, and if you're wanting to mine Ethereum coins and uh, other cryptocurrencies, having both these on will significantly uh, increase the performance of uh, cryptocurrency mining. You can't have one on without the other. Now. As far as these options go, you can do this if you want. I leave it auto, but the higher the gen, the faster your entire system will be overall. I sometimes put the gen four, other times I don't. Now for the graphics card though, which is the PCI Express one slot, remember the very first slot under the processor, where your, that's where your graphics card goes. Well, that would be that setting right there. So usually for the graphics card, I put it to gen four. That way it uses the full speed of the graphics card. Chipset would be more like the for the motherboard and processor. I usually keep this at auto. You don't really need to switch this one. Like I said, most applications of these graphics cards are more powerful than processors and everything else. It'll just put this way if the computer uses the graphics card at Gen 4 speed, then it's gonna auto, get it auto automatically switch the processor and the motherboard and everything else to gen 4 as well so that's why i just keep it auto it'll switch to gen 4 when it needs to same thing for the pcie lanes configuration keep that auto don't fuck with that also for this computer build we actually bought 4400 megahertz ram speed but look at the top there look under uh it says ddr speed what does that say to you it says 2133 megahertz that's odd. I bought 4,400 RAM sticks. Why is it at 2133? Well, this is why I told you to refer to the RAM compatibility list on your motherboard manufacturer's website. This RAM I bought is 4,400, but it's running at a default speed. Whatever RAM speeds you buy from that compatibility list on your motherboard manufacturer's website, if you want the highest speed that's shown for, you know, get the speed that you paid for, you have to overclock it. Now here's the cool thing. You don't have to overclock your processor or overclock your graphics card to overclock your RAM. Some people might tell you, well, if you overclock one component, you, you have to overclock everything. No, you don't. It depends on what you're overclocking. If you're overclocking your processor, then yeah, you should probably also overclock your graphics card and vice versa. Overclocking your RAM is actually separate from the processor and graphics card. So anyways, so to get what we pay for right here. Now there's other way, again, this depends on the motherboard and the BIOS or whatever that you're using, but some BIOSes, you might have to go into overclocking settings and then do it this way. There's like called memory try it's. Yeah, see mem memory try it all this extra crap or whatever, older BIOSes and older motherboards. All you literally have to do is search your motherboard and then how to overclock RAM. 
So you could do it that way too. But most newer motherboards nowadays, it's as simple as literally just doing this. You don't gotta do all that shit going all out. All you have to do is just hit this button here. <laughs> literally. Hit A AXMP Profile 1. You hit that one time. Bam. Activated. That is literally how easy it is to overclock your RAM now. You, you do Profile 2 as well. If you do go to Overclock Settings, it tells you under, uh, right here, a AX, your DRAM is basically your RAM. It tells you right there, Profile 1 is 4400, Profile 2 is 4400, but it tells you they're... I mean, I mean, they're the fucking same. Sometimes they're different, uh, depending on the RAM you have actually installed in your computer. So for this build, which really in RAM, which is really weird, I can have either one. And it's the exact same overclock settings. So it doesn't really matter which one I activate. Basically, I think like they're like uh, memory voltages, I think, each of those numbers. But anyways, so you click on this one and it automatically goes into overclock. Now, all we have to do is click on settings again, click on save and exit. You can hit save changes, and it tells you what all you changed. Save configuration, exit. Okay, you can hit yes. You can hit save changes and reboot. I personally don't like to do that because from my experience, sometimes if you click on the save changes and reboot option, sometimes it reboots and it doesn't do anything. So I personally like to hit save changes. I'm old school, I guess. Save changes, hit yes. And then I like to hold the power button on the computer to turn it completely off. So we're going to do that right now. Holding the power button on the computer because we saved the options in it, right? Now we're going to turn the computer back on. But this time we're not going to hit the delete key to go into the BIOS. This is why I told you guys to do the boot priority. Watch what happens. As soon as I hit this power button, it's going to go straight into the Windows setup because the flash drive is plugged in. We made sure that the flash drive is what's booting first. I just gotta give it a minute. Sometimes it takes a minute, but it'll get there. Look at that! Look at that! Now this is what I was trying to tell you about the cool custom version of this ISO I had you guys download of uh, Windows. What's really cool about it is that right here, it's hard to see, but these little there's like three icons down here. The one very, very right, if you click on that, Whoops, wrong one. <laughs> I'm using two computers here. One to record from and actually one, uh, the, the one that we're uh, working on. Start, right here, start menu. And then look at that. See, partition assistant, just in case you're using a hard drive that maybe the computer's not recognizing right now. Uh, Windows to go, kind of cool. Check disk, you can check for your hard disk or SSDs for errors ahead of time. You can use the command prompt right now. You can test your RAM. Like, let's see, maybe see, like, your uh, speed. But you get your ideas, all these different programs you can use. Uh, you can add separate, I don't know why you would need to add drivers, extra drivers than what you already downloaded, but I guess that's an option. Task manager, yeah, yeah you, like I said, you get your idea. Uh, we don't even have uh, Windows installed, so I don't even know what the use is for the registry editor and all that shit is, but okay. You got Explorer++, plus plus, which is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, that's really cool, huh? You can actually mess with your hard drives and SSDs are already installed, and this is kind of like a portable version of Windows. You can't actually, it's not actually Windows, but uh, it's set up like Windows. That's why it's, it's called Explorer, and you can actually go into all your folders that, if there is anything in any of them, see? <laughs> there isn't, because, you know, <laughs> it's not actually running Windows. All right, so as you can see, this is the computer in the bedroom. I just brought it into the living room so I can work on it. And as you can see, the BIOS is completely different from the other one. That's why I said all it's all motherboard dependent. Different manufacturers, their layouts, their BIOSes look different than other uh, motherboards. So anyways, we're going to do exactly what we did last time. But this one does not have near as many, because it's an older computer. This is not going to have near as many features on the motherboard as the one we just changed. But either way, I still have to do the exact same thing I did last time. I need to find secure boot and fast boot and turn those off. BIOS. Oh, cool. So, yeah. So, see, fast boot. See? <laughs> so, that's disabled. So, that's good. See, if you notice in this BIOS, this one does not have a list for the boot orders. This one, I have to click on the BIOS tab. And under boot option priorities, I actually have to switch it to the flash drive. And keep in mind, I did download the BIOS update as well as the drivers for this computer. I removed the BIOS update and drivers I had from the flash drive and the previous BIOS section. And I replaced those with this motherboard's BIOS update and drivers instead. Because like I said, I didn't 
I already had Windows and everything installed on the new build for this video, but I'll just, I'm just going to be showing you how to uh, install Windows itself and set that all up now. And I don't really have to show you how to do that on the new build we just built. I can show that on the uh, bedroom one. As you can see, this is completely outdated. The, the new one that I, I found on Google was on February of this year. 2022 so this is i definitely have to up update it <sighs> again i gotta like i said i still have to make sure to see xmp that you'd have to uh turn on xmp to overclock your ram you'd have to do it in this section so i again the bios for every motherboard is different for every motherboard so to overclock the ram to get the speed you're paying for you'd have on a gigabyte board i don't know if it's for all gigabyte boards, but for this one, you have to go in the MIT tab, and then Advanced Memory Settings, and then Extreme Memory Profile XMP, and then turn that on. But I don't have RAM installed into this computer that can be overclocked anyway, so... Sometimes if you can't find the back button, you can hit Escape on the keyboard. I showed you on the MSI motherboard that I have for the actual computer build that we built to update their BIOS. Theirs is called MFlash. Well, Gigabyte calls theirs QFlash. See my point? Anyways, click on QFlash because we I do have the BIOS update file on the flash drive. So right there, you can save the BIOS too. You don't really need to though. It's only like, I mean, you can if you want, especially if you have OCD like me. But like I said, I don't care. I've never had problems updating the BIOS. So if you save the BIOS, that that sometimes can help. Like if the computer like fucks up software wise through i don't know through windows or i don't know there's could be several reasons why you would want to save it but again i never save it so i don't really care so i'm just going to click on update bios and then right here again it's always laid out so i got to click on the flash drive so this is not my flash drive this is the ssd it's installed into it right here sandisk that's my usb so all right and then bios folder so bios folder Shit, I actually double click too much. <laughs> so yeah, BIOS folder on my flash drive. And then there is my BIOS update file. Or double click it. There you go, verify, and it'll just start doing it. Or, never mind, so I guess you can press the start. See, you, you can have it back it up too, but like I said, I never do, so that's just me. And of course, you see the mouse might be jittery, or again, or it might not even work at all, just like the uh, MSI motherboard showed, so. So of course now it says reboot. It's going to restart itself. Like always, probably restart itself several times. Just be patient, let it do its thing. Whatever it boots into, let it boot into it. And again, whatever it boots into, we're not going to worry about that. We're going to hold the power button of the computer and then again, press the key and go back in the BIOS again. All right. Again, I'll hold the power button. Press the power button. I'm going to keep hitting the delete key. Throw it back into the BIOS. All right. Bam. That's the most up to date. All right. So under BIOS for this, I switched to boot priorities. So we can actually go into the Windows installation. What I can act, what I actually was going to show you to begin with. Look on the BIOS tab. Again, this is motherboard dependent. MSI has a list at the very, very top at the top. As soon as you go into the BIOS, you can change ahead of time right then and there. Gigabyte boards clearly at the user tab at the top. So click on BIOS tab and then our boot option priorities. We need to change this to the flash drive. Number one, the very first device that we need to boot is the flash drive that has the Windows installation set up on it. So right there, so you double click it or again, depending on your motherboard and BIOS, you'll hit enter and then use the up and down arrows and enter again, usually to select it. So select it. Now, number one, the very first device that will boot with the computer is the flash drive. Now we're good to go. This motherboard, unfortunately, does not, I believe, have rebar support. Uh, and it's not a Gen 4 motherboard, so I can't change any of that shit either. So it's not going to have those uh, faster features. But anyways, we're good now. All this is fine. We're going to click on Save and Exit. Save and Exit Setup. What's cool about this too, certain motherboards, sometimes you don't even have to change the boot order. Sometimes you can click on an option on boot override. What that does is actually go straight into whatever you're trying to load. Instead of actually having to restart the computer and then let the computer boot into it. Boot override, if your motherboard supports boot override, you can just double click on whatever you're trying to load and it'll just load straight into it. 
honestly, I could just double click the flash drive under the boot override now instead of having to restart a computer. It, it should go straight into the Windows setup <laughs> since the you know Windows setup is installed to the flash drive. You know, I'm gonna save after I change boot order and so. All right, there it is. Now uh, I already showed that earlier, so we're gonna go right in the Windows setup. Click on the Windows icon. So I gotta do setup starting sweet. All right, click on next. And then there's, as you see, there's different versions. Now this was listed on Ghost Spectre's website, but here I'll just explain it to you. If you want the fastest operating system, you want super light, but compact is usually like, I guess one step above like Windows 11 home. Like if you still want to give somebody like your grandma or grandma, or whatever, a Windows 11 Pro, or Windows 10 Pro, or whatever, right? And they, they don't need the significant crazy speed or whatever, even they might like it. <laughs> but even if they don't really care, then you could do compact. But if we're talking like performance in games, streaming and all that type of stuff and content creation and just overall performance of your computer and you want the fastest possible, you want super light. So now the difference is there's plus defender and then you'll see some are without, which means one version is without Microsoft Windows Defender. Cause remember I told you some programs slow your computer down. For this computer, I'm not on this computer like as m near as much as I am on these two in the living room. So I don't really care to have Defender on it at all. So I'm not gonna put Defender on it. I'm just gonna have the Super Light. Now there's also Super Light Special Edition. Now Special Edition, the only difference between the SE and the regular one, the Special Edition regular one is the Special Edition one actually has the classic start menu on the bottom. Okay, it's, that's literally the only difference. But the cool thing is that even though it is not in development anymore, you don't need Start as Back. You can download a free, again, free program called Classic Shell. It it works on Windows 11 too. Like I said, it's not being updated anymore and stuff like that. I think the dude that was developing the program, like, I don't know if it, what happened, but it does say on his website, on the website that he's no longer developing. But then you have Start as Back, uh, or Start All Back or whatever which is technically paid, paid software. I usually just download Classic Shell because like I said, it's free. It still, it works on Windows 7, 8, 10, and 11 still, despite the developer not working on it no more. You don't really need a special edition. I'm just going to get set up for, like I said, Superlight without Defender. Click on next. I accept. Do not click on upgrade. If you're installing Windows, it's best to literally delete everything off the hard drive that's already on it anyway so so i'm gonna click on install windows only custom and this is where it's going to get interesting now this computer has two drives installed to it one is an ssd one is actually a regular hard drive what i'm going to do is i'm going to the one that i'm not installing windows to i'm going to leave that alone and you should know which is which, unless you have two of the same size hard drives, then two of the same size SSDs, then good luck trying to figure out which one's with it, I suppose. Trying to be rude there, but... <laughs> but anyway, so I'm going to delete, it's drive zero, which is the main one that has Windows on it. I'm going to select partition three, I'll click on delete, and ignore this, I'll click on OK. Partition two, do the same thing, click on delete, click OK again. And as you notice, there uh, some of these partitions are going away. And I'm going to do the exact same thing for the partition one at the very, very top. Click on delete and OK. Now, you might not ha actually have to do this, especially if you're just, if you literally just built your computer and you put all of it together and it's a brand new hard drive or brand new SSD from the store and everything, you're probably not going to have no partitions at all. It's probably literally going to say unallocated space for each drive that's installed to your computer. So don't worry. I'm just saying like if, if you're using like maybe a friend's HDD or SS, hard drive or SSD that he gave to you and you want to use it in your computer or something, see what I'm saying? Then he probably didn't format it. If you actually plug it in with the SATA cable, see what I'm saying, and the power supply, then any try to install Windows or try to have Windows recognized or whatever, then you might notice that it has several partitions you're got you're gonna have to delete to use it yourself so anyways so this is our main ssd that we're going to install windows 2 so we're going to click on this one and we're gonna click on uh, new do not ever hit format you don't have to usually format the drives it will format it automatically once you uh, click on new and then go to the next process and install windows to it okay so drive zero biggest one and that's our ssd that one click on new Click on the up arrow to make sure that's the the whole amount of the drive. Click apply. 
And then it says to ensure that all Windows features work correctly, Windows might create additional partitions. Imagine that. For system files. Hit OK. So then, as you can see here, you have all these different partitions. Now you might get confused. Well, which one do I use? Well, you want to install Windows to the biggest partition. If it's one, two, and three, look for the total size. Which one's the highest one? GB is higher than MB, and there's over 3,000, which is technically three terabyte. So that's the, that's the partition we want to install Windows to. So I click on next, and then it should install Windows. And especially if you're installing a Windows to an SSD, it should be extremely fast. This installation shouldn't take longer than five minutes if you're installing to an SSD. All right, so this is a Windows needs restart to continue. You can hit click on restart now in the bottom right or just let the whole meter go and it'll restart. Okay, now at this point, what it should do is it should go straight into Windows. In other words, what I'm trying to say is you shouldn't have to redo the boot priorities in the BIOS. When you install an operating system, any, not, not just Windows, you know, Linux or what, you know, whatever, it should automatically change the boot priorities after you install the operating system and it'll, it should automatically, like I said, switch it to the hard drive, aka your SSD or whatever you're, you know, using that has Windows on it now. Now here's the thing, leave the flash drive in the USB port right still. And we're gonna wait until it actually goes into asking us for our username and password, basically, to set up that. Again, it might, a computer might even restart a few times. There you go. Now this, I don't condone piracy. If you do have a product key, you can go ahead and enter it now. But if not, you plan on purchasing Windows later or whatever, then you can do that. There are also, like I said, I don't condone piracy, but there are other ways to activate it without a product key. But I'm not going to tell you how, because like I said, I don't condone piracy. But anyways, but if I move a little bit, it says do this later. You can click on do this later if you don't have one. So we're going to click on do this later. Down there where my mouse is right next to me. <laughs> click on that. And then this is where you can change your password, stuff like that. There you go. Enter whatever finalize. And now we can actually sign into it. At this point, you should plug in your Ethernet cord into your Ethernet port of your computer. I'm sure you know how to plug in an Ethernet cord from a modem. <laughs> Hi, this might take a few minutes. Don't turn off your PC. Almost there. All right. Now, of course, once it, as soon as it boots up, it'll say restart required. Go ahead and just do what Ghost Spectre's uh, modified version of Windows says. Now, here's the thing too though. If you plug in your Ethernet cord and it still does not work, and it's still showing that you have no internet at all, then unfortunately you're going to have to use your buddy's computer or another computer. You might be able to even use your smartphone. And if, if you have a USB Type-C or regular you know, or adapter or stuff like that to plug your phone into the computer, then you can copy the your Ethernet drivers over to the computer. Sometimes, and usually though, your motherboard will actually come with a installation disk. But like I said several times, showed several times, if you built your computer or whatever, it might not even have, you know, a CD drive to install the driver from a disk. So either way, you'd have to go on the internet somehow to get the driver for your internet, aka your, your ethernet port. So I'm just saying, I, I, I've came across a situation like that before where I saw Windows and no matter what I did, the internet was not working. Even after plugging in the ethernet cord and the port with my modem, and I know it might, the ethernet cord worked for everything else, but it wouldn't work for the computer. So what I literally had to do is I'd use another computer and I went on the motherboard's manufactured website and I download the drivers for that motherboard for the ethernet aka the internet then i copied that to a flash drive then i plugged it into the computer that was in the, where the internet's not working then i copied over the drivers extracted the drivers out of the zip files installed them the internet started working so so I, i'm just saying sometimes you might it, that might happen to you but now here's the thing even though i unplugged that flash drive <laughs> I had all, I had the drivers copied to that. So now the first thing we need to do before we install anything else within Windows is actually install the drivers.
All right, so I plug my flash drive back in that has my drivers on it that I downloaded earlier, and I had you guys download from your motherboard manufacturer's website. For Windows 11 here, this is Windows 11, we need to click on the folder here. Now, don't worry about how the start menu looks. You can actually change how this looks. What I mean is, if you're not used to the start menu being right in the middle of the taskbar at the bottom, I can show you how to put it all the way to the left hand side. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. But first, again, we need to install drivers. So click on the folder here, and then right here is our flash drive, or you can go to this PC, and then the flash drive, of course, that has the windows on it. And then look, lo and behold, oh, imagine that drivers folder, okay? Also, do not use third party programs like Driver Booster or Driver Easy or stuff like that to update your drivers of your computer this is for anybody including my family and friends watching this video that want to know how to update your computer drivers whenever you need to the only way to do it is you need to find out what motherboard model your motherboard is and to do that all you have to do is under your start menu under the search type in ms info 32 okay so ms for microsoft abbreviations for microsoft then info info so for short for information and then 32 i don't know what the numbers are for but 32 so ms info 32 and hit enter or you can click on it ms info 32.exe okay this will bring up this dialog box here this will tell you under your system model right here or your baseboard product right here in parentheses sometimes they'll even give you the motherboard name and this is what your model number is after you get the model number from this then bring up an internet browser type that model number in and put drivers after it so what was it again it was ms-7c59 it's the same thing up here, MS-7C59. There you go. It's a most recent search as well. <laughs> MS-7C59 drivers. And lo and behold, bam. There's the motherboard. And this will go directly to your motherboard manufacturer's website. Just like I showed so many times ago throughout how to get certain things like your RAM compatibility list and your actual drivers so you'll click on it and there you go this is also where you're going to get your bios updates for your motherboard as well oh, there you go driver and select your operating system and download your drivers now if you follow along with this video and you actually installed the ghost specters version of windows 10 or windows 11 it might not come with an internet browser already for you to be able to get on the internet to download your drivers and other programs that you want to install to your computer so you'll actually have to run a program that's already installed within his versions of windows called ghost toolbox and it's going to be in a three-dimensional orange cube on the top left hand corner right after you install windows now whether he releases more up-to-date windows 10 and 11 versions of his modified versions of windows and the icon might be changed is whether to be seen but for right now it's a three-dimensional orange cube and it'll say ghost toolbox right below it okay you should already have it installed like it says as soon as you install windows you should already have it on your desktop right then and there so again this is if you're using ghost specters version of uh, windows 10 or 11 so you double click on ghost toolbox and you wait on it to load if it pops up saying there's an update available you can hit yes and then if you hit yes at all then it's going to go directly to a youtube video of his and you'll have to go in the video description of that video and it'll have the update to whatever update he's talking about okay so anyways as you see here by the ghost toolbox right here under installer choose whatever browser you want so just choose one i usually do chrome so you just type in the number corresponds with whatever you're wanting to install 14 is google chrome so i'm going to type in 14 hit enter 
and then of course right here you hit one to download it and then go through with the installation to install your internet browser now with this motherboard what's cool is since i install windows 11 i don't actually need internet drivers which is kind of cool i guess i guess windows 11 already comes with the internet drivers for this motherboard already uh, with the setup and installation but if you do go on the motherboards website for this older motherboard uh, you'd have to get the ethernet internet drivers for it if you're installing windows 10. what i can do though and what we need to do though is we need to install the audio driver and we need to install the chipset driver but the first the very first thing is the chipset let me explain why so the chipset is basically required to allow your processor to communicate with all the rest of your computer components like your motherboard the ram the uh, graphics card and stuff like that it also is extremely important for usb port communication stuff like that for example if you don't install any drivers all right now and you were to install a usb external drive to this computer okay and you try to transfer something over it might say it's gonna take an hour or two for anything which is odd even if for a small file so this like can weird you out like what the fuck it's only like 10 megabyte why why is windows saying it's, only, it's gonna take a whole hour to copy because you have to install chipset drivers so i said i i'm just letting you guys know ahead of time to save you a headache because i ran into a situation like that before too so anyways so the chipset is a must so right click under the chipset this context menu with windows 11 is going to be weird i'll show you to change this later i can, you can actually switch it back to the older windows context menu Again, I'll show you that later. But for Windows right now, we're going to right click on this and then we're going to click on show more options. And 7-Zip, lucky for us, is already installed with Ghost Spectre's version of Windows, which is awesome. Or you can do the extract all when you first right clicked on. You can do that too, but I like 7-Zip. It's faster than Windows extraction. So I uh, click on show, like I said, show more options in 7-Zip and then click on or highlight it and then click on extract files. So, okay. Honestly, I don't even know why I am extracting it to the flash drive. I should have copied to the fucking... See how slow this is being? Watch this. Watch the power of... Watch the power of... SSDs. Now I'm going to do it here. Show more options. Highlight this. Extract files. Done. Look at that. Lightning fast! Didn't even take a second. <laughs> so weird. We're just extracting everything, all of our drivers, out of the folders now. And then we're going to drag the zip files in the swipe recycle bin. Okay, chipset drivers, double click it. And then we're going to double click the exe file. All right. Now, I have a few, th a couple things I want to explain to you about the chipset drivers. Sometimes the chipset drivers come with what's called APU drivers. Now, the APU drivers are specifically only for specific graphics cards so if you're like me okay and you have a nvidia graphics card plugged into an amd motherboard it is an amd motherboard because we're using an amd processor that's how you know what type of motherboard you're using either intel or amd because it's the processor brand you're using usually amd motherboards with amd processors go better with amd graphics cards but we all know NVIDIA is king with graphics card and game performance. <sighs> that's the what's cool at PC. They're interchangeable. You can use an AMD graphics card with an Intel processor. Or use an AMD processor, like in our case, with an NVIDIA graphics card. Or you can use an AMD processor and AMD graphics card. Or an Intel processor with an NVIDIA graphics card. Anyways, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because sometimes the chipset drivers try to install the APU drivers. If you try to install the chipset drivers and it pops up an error when it gets to the APU driver installation, it pops up an error saying it cannot detect a compatible uh, graphic memory interface or whatever, GPU, whatever. Okay, this this something many of the sort don't worry about it just ignore it all these motherboards i have are all amd motherboards but i have all nvidia graphics cards installed into them so that's why i'm telling you from experience specifically for amd motherboards the apu drivers will only install if you have an amd graphics card installed into your amd motherboards so that's why the error usually pops up because if it does have the apu driver bundled with the chipset driver sometimes it'll pop up saying it can't detect a graphical memory interface and that's why because it's, it can't detect an, an amd graphics card it's detecting an nvidia graphics card 
That's why I said if the era, if that error ever pops up, ignore it. Like I said, this is all motherboard dependent. Also, sometimes they have them separated. You have the chipset driver and then you have the APU driver. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card and you're planning on putting an NVIDIA graphics card plug, plugged into an AMD motherboard, just ignore the APU driver. You do not need it because like I said, it will fail. Anyway, so uh, now the next one, we, we have the chipset driver installed. Now we're going to do the Realtek one. Now this one's kind of confusing. There's a lot of fucking files. Realtek is for our audio. Make sure audio works. Uh, so that's obviously important. <laughs> Double click it, double click this folder, and then don't worry about any of this. We're going to scroll down to setup. So setup.exe, double click this. <sighs> click on next. Uh, installation is two-step process. Uninstall the current, click next, remove, reboot the system, and then install it. We don't have the Realtek audio driver installed, so we don't have to uh, remove it, then restart it, then proceed to install the new one. We don't got to do all that shit. So, installation complete. Yes, I want to restart. Let's just go ahead and do it now. So, I'll click on next and uh, next and I guess we start again. All right, now depending if you got a Radeon graphics card or an NVIDIA graphics card, I can't really help you with the Radeon software. So, if you're a Radeon driver, so if you have a Radeon graphics card, then you're on your own with that. I'm sure you're smart enough to figure it out. Different key shortcuts how to activate recording and streaming and stuff like that if you want to use well if you want to use the graphics card recording software instead of obs but that is an option uh, i like to use nvidia's shadow play or otherwise known as geforce experience now it's still the same thing they wrapped it all into one program i like to use it for instant replay feature and to save certain things especially for example like shit like this where i'm like recording the desktop I like to use it for that. Believe it or not, I'm actually not using it for that right now. I'm actually, I actually have the computer that we're uh, setting everything up with plugged into my capture card of another computer, the one I'm actually recording from. So I'm actually, actually I'm actually using OBS as we speak. But anyway, so um, just Google, Google NVIDIA drivers, wrong keyboard again. I always keep thinking it's the one I'm, computer I'm recording from. It's not the same one. NVIDIA drivers, it does get confusing, especially if you're using one computer to play PC games from another computer to stream to, then it can get confusing because you have to have two different keyboards and two different <laughs> mice next to each other, and sometimes like it throws you off. So NVIDIA drivers, right here, official drivers, NVIDIA, okay. And unfortunately, the graphics card we have in this bedroom PC we're actually, we install this to is actually a 20 ATI. So we're going to, under product type, GeForce, it's still GeForce. It's not a notebook. It is not a laptop. <laughs> so 20 series, no notebooks and parentheses, 20 series, RTX 20 series, RTX 2080 Ti. The operating system is Windows 11. That is the operating system we're using. And now the difference between these two. Okay, so believe it or not, it actually does not matter which one you get except for a few reasons i want to go over in my personal opinion from my experience game ready driver is only useful for let's just say a pc game just came out it just came out usually nvidia or amd or for their car graphics cards they usually release a graphics card driver update right then and there on day one right before the game gets released or right after it gets released and it's extremely important because, well, if you don't update your graphics cards drivers to the most up-to-date that supports that game, then sometimes it can cause weird issues. Like, maybe the game won't go full screen. Or maybe there's, like, glitches in the main menu or something. Like, weird artifacts or something like that. Like You also have weird graphic problems when you're adjusting graphics and stuff like that. Or when you're actually trying to play the PC game sometimes. Uh, it's rare. But it can happen. So from my experience, game ready drivers are only really useful for, like I said, updating your graphics right then and there for brand new PC games that just come out. Okay. Studio drivers in our hand are, in my opinion, the better of the two. They're more stable. Sometimes, sometimes they're actually faster, uh, but they're mainly only made for video editors, streamers, imagine that, and even developers, like game developers, just game developers, uh, movie makers, produce basically content creators, period. 
and they're specifically for speeding up those workflows. For example, when workflow, if you don't know workflow means it's basically like when you get done editing a video, for example, and you're finally encoding it, if the workflow is sped up, then the video encoding, AKA video output process would be faster considered the workflow based on what the computer is doing for you when you're not doing nothing. I mean, that's, I guess it's like half of what workflow is, but <laughs> you get what I'm trying to say. So 20 ATI, Windows 11, Studio Driver, search, click on search, and then here it is. So just download the most up-to-date one, click on download, save it wherever. All right, let's install it. I click on it at the bottom, or you can go to the folder you downloaded it to. Click on run, of course, click okay. All right, so we want both the driver and GeForce Experience because the GeForce Experience will give you, like I said, other recording methods and other performance enhancements and you just want GeForce Experience, okay? You just want it. <laughs> so click on agree and continue. What I like to do, even though that we don't have no graphics card uh, driver installed, I like to click on custom and I'll show you why. So click on custom, click on next. Really every single time I install a graphics card driver, I always go custom. And the reason why is because right here it says, it pretty much does a clean installation. It literally removes every single file that's from the previous driver and then installs the new ones. And that's what I like to do, like I said, almost every time a new graphics card driver comes out. That's what I do though. You don't gotta do that. You could probably do Express and be fine. I like to do that because I like to my computers to run as sufficient and stable as possible. So I'll click on next for custom and then right here, make sure this box is checked. Perform a clean installation. So click on that and then click on next. And as you can see though right here, it says current version 456.71. So there was a graphics card driver already installed, but believe it or not, it was from when, with the Windows update. So this is why it's important to install your drivers anyway, because, well, Windows Update is most likely going to, uh, if, if it installs drivers for you, it's going to most likely install out-of-date drivers anyway. Make sure you have the most up-to-date drivers by doing what I told you previously on um, before installing Windows. Make sure just download all your drivers, most up-to-date drivers, straight from the motherboard manufacturer's website and install those after you install Windows. Instead, that way Windows does not fuck up and install out of date drivers, making you go back to the motherboard manufacturer website to install the most up to date drivers anyway. I was trying to save you time. So perform click, click on next. So now it's gonna remove the graphics card driver that Windows installed for us through its update, uninstalling the outdated one and now installing the up to date driver for the graphics card. Keep these checked and click close now. And then you'll see the uh, NVIDIA graphics card settings. I'm gonna go ahead and log into it with my Google account. I was already signed in on my browser, so it says Google login completing and close it. Shit, now I got a fucking two-factor authentication shit. So now I gotta go on my phone here, and then I gotta go to right here, authenticate your email address, verify. I'm, I'm, I'm doing it on my phone. It just sent a two-factor authentication verification link from Invi from NVIDIA to my email. So I had to tap verify email address. Now it's going to do this again. It recommends an additional security protect your account. I don't have that set up with NVIDIA and I don't really care to set that up now. So I'm going to click on not now for that. <sighs> then this is automatically optimized newly added games applications. I don't like to. I like to adjust my graphics settings for every single PC game I play on a game by game basis. So I am going to uncheck this and I'm also going to click on skip. I'm not doing a tour. I already know how, to, how this fucking application works. Drivers. If you click on driver at the top here in the tab, this is where you'll actually get your drivers from if you don't want to get them through the NVIDIA website. Now, of course, if you don't already have the graphics card and driver installed, you'll have to get the driver from the NVIDIA website anyway. Matter of fact, sometimes over time, if you forget to install your graphics card driver, it'll actually pop up on the bottom right-hand corner. Something will pop up saying, new GeForce Studio driver, new GeForce uh, driver available. So it will let you know if there's a, an update available anyway. But you, what's cool about this is uh, the GeForce experience. And this is why I say go ahead and install it is because you can also switch to and from the studio on GeForce drivers. So right now I have the studio driver. Like I said, I, I wanted to install. But like I said, let's just say you need to switch to the GeForce uh, game ready driver. 
because you're trying to use your studio driver to run a, a PC game and it's not working right. All you gotta do is right here, it's the three dots right here, and then right here, choose your driver preference. And you can click on game, click on game ready driver and it'll switch. And there you go, see? And it pops up what I was trying to say earlier. You have a studio driver uh, installed, but it's saying there's a new driver <laughs> update available because you switched to the, you, you're you trying to say, hey, I wanna switch to the game ready and you can download from that. Then you can do the clean installation thing that I showed you earlier. The custom installation, then clean installation. If I were you, I would highly recommend, if you're going to switch back and forth between the two, if you ever need to do that, I highly recommend that you do not do the the keep exist, existing settings option. You know, when you first, you know, when you install your driver, like I said, custom to do a clean installation, but then there's uh, the top option. Don't do the top option to keep your settings. If you're gonna install a, a completely different driver, I'm talking like Studio and a Game Ready. They're two completely different drivers. If you're gonna switch from one to the other, make sure you do cl a clean installation since they are technically not the same drivers. But I'm gonna switch back because I don't really need to do that. So click on Studio Driver and go back to that. And yep, already have had the latest. So you have the latest. All right, so. Now, unfortunately, sometimes you might come across a situation where you actually have to revert back. It's called rolling back to a previous graphics card driver. You cannot get the older graphics card drivers or your previous graphics card driver once you update through the GeForce Experience app. You have to actually get the older version of the graphics card driver you previously had. Yes, it's still going to be on the NVIDIA website, but in a completely different section now why would you want to you know revert back to a previous driver that you were using well sometimes you might run into worse graphical problems in your games or you might have problems recording your audio is not recording right even after you restart reinstall the driver and everything the most up-to-date driver you still have issues in your pc game like really bad and even your recording software is performing like shit okay for example that one of my streams on youtube there was a big chunk of the stream missing but my previous streams never had that problem and that was because before i did that stream i updated my graphics card driver and realized the newest driver at the time is what's causing that problem now since i reverted back i shouldn't have that problem no more you'll learn as you go but basically to get the previous graphics card driver if you actually need it you actually have to search for advanced nvidia driver search so you type that into google advanced nvidia driver search and it's right on nvidia.com's website but like i said it's, com it's a completely separate area of nvidia's website and you might have not known that it existed because if you just search for nvidia drivers go to official drivers right here what we did previously there's no way to get to the advanced drivers unless if you didn't notice at the very very bottom right there beta older drivers and more you click on beta and older drivers so if you click on that it should go directly to the advanced uh, driver search as well like i said if you're this is again this is only if you need to roll back and go to the previous driver so advanced nvidia driver search you can put that into google advanced nvidia driver search or Again, like I said, you can just type in NVIDIA drivers, click on what I just showed. You just, right here at the bottom, beta and older drivers. And then you put your graphics card in, your operating system. Make sure your Windows driver type is DCH if you're running Windows 10 or 11 because DCH is the faster graphics driver of the two. Click on search. And of course, there you go. See release date. You got the older ones. And you have the studios and the game readies, whichever one you need to go back to. We also need to install our GPU fan control software. Now, this is usually GPU dependent. If you have like an EVGA graphics card, then you want to install the software that EVGA provides, like the, uh, I think it's called the Precision X1 software. Uh, and the reason why specifically for their graphics cards is because they also provide firmware updates for their graphics cards through their fan control software. Kind of odd, but also kind of cool at the same time. Now, whether all third-party graphics card vendors do that as well, like uh, MSI's graphics cards and uh, Asus's graphics cards like that, I don't know. It's up to you, but 
Either way, uh, what I usually do, and it works for all graphics cards, I'm just saying, for example, EVJ specifically use their fan control software. If you have another third-party graphics card, then like MSI, Asus, whatever, or even NVIDIA's main Founders Edition card or whatever, then you can get by with just getting MSI's fan control software. It's called MSI Afterburner, and that's what we're going to be using. MSI Afterburner. So, right here, msi.com afterburner dash msi, and then click on download. Oh, like set first. Click on download afterburner. Save the downloads folder. Okay, cool, sweet, awesome, wicked, fabulous, fantastic, super amazing. Downloads, and then msi afterburner, right click, 7-zip, extract files, and then hit OK. Or just extract it however you do it. And then delete the zip file, go into the folder we just extracted. MSI Afterburner. Okay, next. I accept, next. Yeah, we, we want to install River Tuner as well. So, do not create shortcuts, install. Now, just like the GeForce Experience in its shadow play that shows the FPS in your games, River Tuner also can do the same thing in your games. It's up to you. You don't really need River Tuner, but some things in it, Afterburner will not work without it. So. All right, uncheck show readme, you don't need that shit. So go ahead and run it. Now as you see here, look how tiny it is. You can't even see it. I want to show you how to fix situations like this. Some programs will show up just like this when you boot them at higher resolutions like 4K and higher. So to fix this, this is what you'll do. Go ahead and exit out of this. We're gonna right click on the program that's given this problem. Right click on it. And then we're gonna go to properties. I know I'm in the fucking way. You see it? You see right there? See right under my armpit right there? Properties. <laughs> okay. We're clicking on that. Again, right, right click on it and we're clicking on properties. Okay. Now, when this comes up, you're gonna click on compatibility tab. Then right here, change high DPI settings. We're gonna click on this. And then right here, under high DPI scaling override, we're going to check this box under override high DPI scaling behavior. And right here, scaling performed by, and we're gonna change this to system. Okay, system, hit okay, hit okay. Now we double click and run it. Now look, look how big it is. Much better, <laughs> much, much, much better. Much, much better. So of course, even though it's the fan control software, any fan control software for your graphics card is used to control the fans and control when you want the fans of the graphics card to speed up, depending on how hot the graphics card gets. But it also is useful for if you ever want to overclock your graphics card. You are planning on overclocking, do not overclock your graphics card or your processor unless you water cool either one of them or both of them. Under MSI after Afterburner, we want to make sure it runs at startup. So at the top right here, apply window startup. So make sure that that icon is blue. I'm going to click on that. And then we're also going to click on the little settings icon right here on the left hand side. And then under fan, we're going to click on enable user defined software automatic fan control. Click this. And then this is presented to us with what's called a fan curve. Now with this, we need to adjust this according to how hot the, the graphics card is going to get. So let's just say and the graphics card gets about 40 degrees Celsius hot. Okay, If it gets 40 degrees, I want the fan speed of the uh, graphics card to run at 50%. See how that works? So you can uh, add more by just double like add more of these by just double clicking. I technically am gonna leave it where it's at. And yeah, what I'll probably do is I'll probably just double click, yeah, like just like that. <clears throat> and then probably at 20 degrees, have it at 20. Now you have to double click again. Yeah, it's that way it's uh, at a slope and not at a fucking weird stair step and shit. Hit okay. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna click on the little floppy disk thing, click save, click it on, put it on to one, and then we're good to go. All right, now our fan software is always running and then when we restart the computer, it should automatically run as well. So next thing we're gonna install is our Windows updates. Notice we installed our drivers for our motherboard first and installed everything else to the ghost toolbox that we needed and adjust some Windows settings before we go through with the Windows updates. Well, we can go ahead and do Windows updates now. So let's go ahead and do that. So start menu, obviously. Click on settings. And then go away to Windows Update on the left-hand side. 
Now, obviously the cool thing about Go Spectre's modified version of Windows is we can also pause updates for several years instead of, uh, well, just four or five weeks at a time. Windows allows you to pause updates so they're not automatically downloading, automatically installing while you're doing stuff like, oh, I don't know, gaming. Because if it's downloading and installing updates while you're gaming, it can hurt your performance of your games somewhat. Uh, or other stuff like video encoding and video editing performance. But the cool thing about him is that, like say for example, within Windows itself, you can uh, pause updates for up to five weeks, but you forgot how long ago it was when you paused them. Once the five weeks passes, you have to go right back into win Windows settings again and pause them for another five weeks. But sometimes you might forget, see what I'm saying? So one day you might, like I said, play a game or uh, video edit or something and Windows is automatically downloading and installing. You realize, wait a minute, I thought I paused the updates. Then you'll go back into Windows update settings and realize, oh, it's been five weeks already? See what I'm saying? It's cool, Ghost Spectre, there's an option where you can pause it for several years. Um, now keep in mind, updates are still extremely important for your computer because without them, you know, you can more likely to get, you know, more viruses out of nowhere from s some other sources, as well as your performance of your computer can also go down as well without some updates. Some updates actually offer performance within Windows. So it's still wise, but as you can see the ghost toolbox right there, number eight, you could stop updates all the way to 2077. So yeah, uh, for like 55 fucking years. <laughs> Jeez. We're going, like I said, we're going to apply our Windows updates now. So we're going to click on resume updates and we're going to let it check for updates that we need right now. Okay. But as you can see right here under more options, pause updates, you can drop down. Shit. Whoops. It moved on me. So I'll drop down and see pause for five weeks max. But instead of five weeks, you can pause them for 55 years <laughs> uh, through Ghost uh, method on his Ghost Toolbox, which is cool. And as you can see, it's you know installing updates that it needed. And it says pending restart. So we're going to go ahead and restart. Fun, fun. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm bored. <sighs> All right, let's go back to start menu, click on settings again, go back to Windows Update, and this is what I like to do. It says you're up to date, but sometimes it glitches out. So we're going to click on check for updates again, just in case. Check for updates, check for updates. All right, so we're good. So now we can go ahead and pause it. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and pause it for five weeks. That's just what I'm going to do, though. Pause for five weeks. Now, exit out. Bam, Windows updates are done. All right, next thing we need to do is we need to actually run the Invader control panel. Now, sometimes Windows, you can change it within Windows, but I like to personally use the control panel because the Nvidia control panel has other options Windows does not have, specifically for your graphics card. And it should already have been installed after installing your graphics card driver and GeForce experience. Okay. So all you got to do is search for it. So type it in NVIDIA and right here, control panel, bam. So I like to also pin this to the taskbar because sometimes it doesn't run on the bottom right hand side and well, it's not to the desktop. So you got to manually search for it. Unfortunately, we're going to right click on this pin to taskbar as well that way that's right here down here at the taskbar as well click on it and just run it for the first time you'll be presented with something like this just hit agree and continue and then it should pop up here it is let's just stretch it out here high put our arrows over the corner drag it out bam so let's just say you have an 8k television okay and you want to plug your computer into the television well this is where Hertz is extremely important. Let's say your TV supports 4K 120 Hertz via its HDMI port. And you want to play your PC games at 4K 120 Hertz. You might have to set your computer to 4K 120 Hertz after you connect it to TV. Because sometimes when you plug the computer directly, if it's already if your computer's already set to 4K 120 Hertz, but you connect it to the TV, sometimes the TV will like switch it. It's like it could be 4K 60. So you have to make sure that whatever you're trying to run your computer at on your TV that's set to the same exact settings. So to do that, you do it two ways. 
After you plug your computer into the TV, you get our A, right click on the desktop here, click on display settings, and then scroll down, make sure display resolution is that, you know, obviously your 4K, whatever resolution you're wanting, right? And then if you keep scrolling down, click on advanced display. This is what's the important part. Make sure that, like I said, if you're trying to do 4K 120 hertz, make sure it's straight 40 by 2160. And it, this says 120 HZ. Why does the Hertz matter? Well, I've explained this before. If you're wanting to see 120 FPS and you're wanting your display to show you 120 FPS smooth motion, your computer has to be sending 120 frames a second. And that's where the Hertz comes in. Even though the game says it's running at that, doesn't mean your display is gonna show that to you. So if it's 60 Hertz, that means your game's running at showing you 60 FPS. But if you're wanting to see 120 FPS, then this hertz has to be 120. So anyway, so choose refresh rate. Bam! You want to change this to 120. That's why I said that's only if you're connected to a 120 hertz compatible display. You can do the same shit in the video control panel instead. If it's not within Windows or you're having trouble within Windows settings, you can do it through the control panel by just going down to display, change resolution. And then right here, make sure it's at 340 by 2160, and then refresh rate one, uh, 120. But here's the thing. Sometimes it still won't show it, and it's really weird, especially through a TV. For example, my, I have an 8K smart TV, and it's really weird. I cannot have my HDMI port set to HDMI ultra deep color 8K if I want to play 4K 120 FPS on my computer on that TV. And I have a 4K 120 FPS capable HDMI port on this 8K smart TV. So what I have to do, it's so stupid. I have to go around the bin. I have to go within my TV settings with the TV remote. And I have to go into um, basically the video settings of the, the picture. And then I have to, under HDMI ultra deep color settings, I gotta switch from 8K to 4K. By doing this, and then having my computer plugged into the TV, I can scroll down this list here. Even after doing all that, it's only it, only, it will only show 4K 60. So I can scroll down this list here, and then right here, it'll be under PC. And then I can select 4K, and then, look at that, then I can actually set it to 120. So yeah, <laughs> keep that in mind. So anyways, okay, cancel, just get rid of all that shit, exit out of all that. Next thing we need to do is we need to make sure GPU rebar support is enabled. Now I know what you're thinking. We already enabled that in the BIOS. Doesn't mean the graphics card is using it. So here's the thing. Even though you enable it in the BIOS, this is how you'll tell if your graphics card is using the rebar support. So on the bottom right hand side here, I guess you can click on the on this if you want, but I'm just gonna go to the control panel again. And in on the NVIDIA control panel, right here, system information. Click on system information. And then check this out. It, it should say rebar. There should be the word rebar. And if it's not listed, then either A, the motherboard does not support it, or B, you cannot activate it without doing the next step. Here's the thing. Sometimes it will just show rebar no. It says rebar support no. And you might be thinking, wait a minute, I activate it in the BIOS, so why is Windows saying it's, it's not supported? Because there's a tool you have to download from NVIDIA's website which is really fucking stupid. But it's called the NVIDIA, NVIDIA Rebar Tool. Right here, the Resizable Bar Firmware Update Tool. Okay, you click on this and scroll down here. And it even tells you what we'll, we'll need. You don't need the game ready driver. You can just have the studio driver and it'll still work. I've, I've tried it on the studio driver. So it's just like, because most people assault the game ready one. So, um, but anyways, you scroll down here and you find it. It tells you right there what it's not supported. It's it's only available for a 3000 series GPUs anyway. So of course this computer, the bedroom computer has a 20 ATI. The 2000 series graphics cards do not support it. Do not have that capability, but I'm still going to show you how to use it nonetheless. So, of course, like I said, you'll scroll down here and you'll find the download to the tool right here. But if you have the third party, then you have to use one of these instead. My 3090 I have is, is a Founders Edition, so I use that one for the Founders Edition. If you have a third party, then you have to download theirs. Anyways, you download that and then just go through the, the instructions. The instructions will let you know, hey, look, press this key. Make sure when to continue, type in yes or whatever. It'll, it'll guide you through it. Make sure to read, pay attention, follow the instructions, 
and then after you actually enable it, then you restart the computer, go back to the BIOS, make sure the GPU bar support, resize bar support is still on. If it's off, re-put it on, save the BIOS settings, restart the computer. Just go ahead and turn off the computer by the power button, then turn the computer back on again. Then, once the computer's back on, then you can go back in the NVIDIA control panel, click on system information, and then from there it should show a rebar support supported or rebar support on whatever it'll say yes now of course this is not including if you overclock it next thing we need to do is if, if your stuff's not already set up this way we need to go to the control panel now unfortunately i don't think there's really any way to go straight to the control panel you actually have to search for it in windows 11 which is fucking stupid so click on star and what we're going to do is type here to search what we're going to do is we're going to type in control panel there it is and what we're going to do for this, yeah, right click, we're going to pin the taskbar. That's what I like to do. What this does, it actually puts the, the symbol of the, <laughs> I know I'm in the way, it puts the symbol for the control panel right on the taskbar. So, so to get right to the control panel, I can just click on it. See, go right to the control panel. I don't know why Bill Gates thought it was a good idea to make Windows 11 like that. It's beyond me, but usually it was as, as easy in the in previous Win version of Windows to just click on a start button and then click on control panel, but now you can't do it. You gotta actually fucking search for it. Just stupid. So anyways, uh, I'm just saying like if you once you find it with a search, right click on it, and then like I said, pin the taskbar that way, you can go right to it from the taskbar, and that's why I like. So a view by right here, click on category, and we're gonna click on large icons. You would also do small icons, probably better anyway. There you go, small icons. And then we gotta change a few things. So we're gonna click on File Explorer Options within Control Panel here. We're gonna click on the View tab, and then we're gonna change two things. And this is especially for all you gamers out there that want to mod, use trainers, and your you know content creators and all that stuff. Okay, hidden files and folders. Go ahead and click on Show Hidden Files and Folders. Click on that one. Make sure it's actually showing all the hidden stuff. And then also under Hide Extensions for Known File Types, make sure this is un checked so it is unchecked so we're good unchecked hide extensions for own file types click on apply click ok and now you're good to go uh stuff so like for example if you download an mp3 song or maybe a mp4 video now it should have the actual file type at the end of the name so let's say you download porn.mov <laughs> or the video file is called porn and then you download it it'll actually show what video file type it is what file format the video is in at the end of the word so it might say porn.mp4.mov whatever okay sometimes if you install a modified version of windows like the icons can't drag over properly or they won't drag over at all and to fix this you right click on the desktop and the way you do is it's under yeah view under view make sure auto arrange icons make sure that's unchecked yeah, I'll check it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. If you click on auto arrange, as you see, you can't drag it and put it like anywhere you want. So you got to make sure that's unchecked. All right, now I'm going to show you how to get the original context menu back instead of this weird shit where you have to click on show more options and to get the original one back. Now, unfortunately, this only works there's probably other ways to do it in other versions of uh windows 11 iso other isos or something but specifically with ghost specters modified version of it how you do it is through ghost toolbox so under ghost toolbox we're gonna double click on obviously to run it and you gotta give it a minute And I believe it's under options for Windows 11. First, we're going to type in the number 42. And hit enter. Yep, that's what it is. So, restored old slash new right click context menu. It's the very first option. So, as you see right here, right click. And then, it's this is Windows 11. And to get the old one, you have to click on show more options. Well, we don't want to do that extra step. So, we want the old one. Let's click on put one. Well, not click, we mean type in one, and we're hit enter to restore the old right-click menu. So, it's restore old. And you can always change it back by typing in two, okay? If you don't want the old one, I guess. Type in one again for the old one. Restore one and hit enter. And it'll just literally refresh Windows Explorer. And then now, as you can see, you right-click. New menu doesn't pop up first. It just goes straight to the old one 
Now, if you installed a custom modified version of Windows 11 and the version that you got will not allow you to drag and drop icons to the taskbar. And this is extremely useful, especially like if you're a video editor like myself and you have a video editing application running in the background and it's at the, on the taskbar at the bottom, right? You might notice that like when you drag icons to like right on top of it okay for example if i want to drag a video to my video editing application at the bottom to bring the video editing application up the window up so i can drag and drop into the video editing application you can't do that within certain versions of windows 11 as you can see like when you drag the icon to the taskbar on top of, of another icon that's already opened it won't let you to fix this I can put a link in the description below if you need to, but there is, now I know Microsoft's rolling out updates to fix this, but if you don't already have that update, then you can download this and install this and it fixes that. So, so you just, uh, it's on github.com. What you do under releases, you click on it right here and then you go over to .exe. So just click on the exe file and then download it and then click on run. And I know it's a Mona Lisa, it's really weird, but it should already work now as soon as you install it. So when you drag something down to it, see, as you see, now it allows you to copy it into whatever you're trying to drag and drop into stuff. So even though it's like not instant, it is kind of delayed or whatever, it still, it's, it, it works. See what I'm saying? So. If you want the start menu to the very, very left hand side, like normal, then you can click on the windows start button here, the icon at the bottom. Okay. The start menu basically in the middle and then click on settings. Then you're going to go under personalization and then at the very, very bottom, you're going to click on a task bar. This bottom bar here is always called the task bar. So click on task bar, then scroll down under task bar behaviors and click on that. And then right here, task bar alignment. Now watch what happens on this drop down menu. We can click on left and look, it moves all the start menu and icons to the very, very left. Like you're used to within the other version of windows, or you can keep it in the middle. Okay up to you. I'll go ahead and keep it on the left hand side because that's what most people are used to. You can also do this automatically hide so you can have it hidden and then it will only pop up when you move your mouse to the bottom. It's kind of cool too, huh? I like it always visible. So that's just me. We got that out of the way. Now, if you want to change this shit too, or like when you're dragging something and it shows a line instead of the window dragging with your mouse. This just changed via your advanced settings. We're going to go in the start menu. I moved it to the left hand side. So start menu left hand side here and then click on settings. Make sure system is selected. We're going to scroll down to about. Okay. About. And then you keep scrolling down and then right here, relay links, click on advanced system settings. Now in other versions of windows, you can get to this by just right clicking on this PC and then click on properties. So right click on this, on this PC and click properties. And this also goes straight to this page as well. Now it's going to look different, obviously in windows 11 than windows 10, but usually in windows 10 or lower, it's, it's going to be white and it's going to look like the you know, older versions of windows, but Either way, like I said, you can right click on this PC and then click on properties to bring up system about and then go straight to advanced system settings from there. Or you can just go to the start menu at the bottom left hand side, like other windows, right? And then click on settings from there and then click on system, then go to about at the bottom of that list, then go to advanced system settings. It's just faster if you, like I said, if you want to do it from this PC, right? Uh, or, you know, my computer, computer, whatever it's labeled as, whatever windows version you're using, right click on it and click properties. Sometimes you can do the same thing with start menu too. When you click on the start menu, you can right click on computer or this PC and then click on properties as well. Click on advanced system settings, whatever. And then under advanced system settings, under performance, Okay, in our advanced tab, under performance, we're gonna click on settings and performance. And this is the, what I like to use, okay? Now, I like to use drop shadows for icon labels. Use smooth scrollless boxes. Right here, show window contents while dragging. Having this on will actually have the window move with your mouse instead of showing the outline of the window. 
I'll show you what I mean in a minute. We're gonna click on it, make sure that one's selected. Show translucent selection rectangle. This is useful for if you want to, for example, use a video as your desktop background. Yeah, you don't have to use, if you didn't know that, you don't have to use a picture as your desktop background. You can actually use full on video. <laughs> it's pretty fucking cool. So if you want to do stuff like that, I like to keep it on no matter what because there might be other like programs that need it on. You might as well just leave it on. Show thumbnails instead of icons. Uh, I like that as well for like, for, for example, say you have videos, you have several different videos like in a folder. What this means is I'll show like a preview, a, a one frame of the video showing you what the uh, video might be. Uh, if you have it unchecked, then it's just gonna show like a symbol, like a video symbol. So you're not gonna know like what videos uh, which, especially if they're not named appropriately. So I like to keep thumbnails on, show shadows under windows. This is useful because it it just gives it more depth and I like that as well on. Shadows under mouse pointer, yes, because it allows you to fucking find your mouse easier too. Save taskbar thumbnail previews. Saving any previews of anything is always good. It's called caching, but technically, especially like when you start video editing, you need to cache video clips. This is extremely useful because that way it's speeds up everything. You want to cache and save previews uh, uh, for most programs because by caching and saving the previews, it doesn't have to redo it again. See what I'm saying? So that way it, it, the, the next time you boot up the program or next time you actually video edit, whatever, all that shit will be cached ahead of time and it'll, and it'll significantly speed up the computer and your uh, view editing and stuff like that. So keep that, definitely keep stuff like that on. Fade out and all that shit don't even need to be on. Enable peak just allows you to see through your windows if you want to have like a cool personalization shit like that. I don't really care for it. I'm going to fucking change the damn color of my windows anyway, so I don't. I don't really care for the see-through window glass shit. So I keep that off. Animation and taskbar is basically down here. Like say you're running a virus scam, it might show on the bottom right hand corner, it might show, you know, the virus scan symbol actually like flashing like from yellow to red or stuff like that. It'll, like it'll actually be animated. Okay, the icon will actually move down here. It's not really required, but if you keep that off, then there will be no animations. The icon will be, it's called static. It means that the icon will just it won't move. It won't change colors. It won't, like I said, rotate. It won't do any effect shit on the bottom, on the, you know, within the taskbar down here. So I keep that off because it speeds up my computer. So animate windows when minimizing, maximizing. So if you remember correctly in some windows, if you hit a minim minimize, you might see like the window like condense itself down first and then go away. That's uh, animated windows. Here I'll show you what I'm talking about. So um, if I turn both the animate, both of these on and I click on apply. So this is what show window contents while dragging does. See, if you notice there's no outline now, it's actually taking the whole window with my mouse as I'm dragging it. And now you see a shadow, whatever, it's under the windows and there's a sh uh, barely a shadow under my mouse everything that I, you know, selected. But here's the thing. So if you click on, okay, see how it fades out, like kind of cool, right? Well, I want my computer faster. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn that shit off and you'll see the difference in settings again. And then we're going to turn these off and now watch how fast it's going to be. Done, done, done. It just, it just immediately goes away. And I like that. And it makes the computer seem like it just, everything just pops up fucking fast so i like that next thing we need to do is we need to actually go to ghost toolbox so click on ghost toolbox and there might be an update it might pop up saying there's an update if there is click on yes and what it'll do is it'll direct you right to his youtube and then go to the video description and then there should be like an uh, update and make sure you click on the time 64 update but if, if there is no update then don't worry about it what i like to do especially if your computer is extremely fast is you need to go under tweaking for gaming i know it says for gaming but just do it anyway even if your your computer is not a gaming computer i'll show you why so we're going to type in the number of what corresponding what we need to go to tweaking for gaming so we're going to type in 39 it's at the bottom here or hit enter Here's the tweaking for gaming options, okay? See, tweaking for gaming. Now, this is what we need to enable. Now, there's actually two ways to enable this. What we're gonna enable is we're gonna enable game mode and ultimate performance power plan. This is going to adjust your power supply and all the rest of your computer components to be high performance. And you want this on for a desktop computer for absolute certainty. Now, you can either 
type in 13 to enable it yourself through ghost you know ghost toolbox and his method and his uh oper modified operating system of uh, windows 10 or windows 11 or you can google how to activate the ultimate performance power plan within Windows 10, Windows 11. You Google the command. I don't have a browser on yet. It's really weird how you got to set this version of Windows, the modified version of Windows uh, up. If you did have a browser, you just go into the browser and like I said, search for how to enable ultimate performance power plan within Windows 11 or within Windows 10. And like I said, usually the Google, the articles that you come across will have a command line. What you have to do is you have to type in CMD on your actual computer to run a command prompt, run as administrator. And then what you'll do is you just literally copy and paste that command line into a command prompt and then hit enter. You can also use what's called Windows PowerShell to do so, but that's usually all you'd have to do to enable it. But Ghost Spectre and his modified version of Windows 10 and Windows 11, he makes it easier to do it for you, which is awesome, by just typing in a, a few keystrokes, which is badass. So enable game mode, that's what we're, how we're going to do it. We're going to type in 13, so 13 for enable, and game mode and ultimate power uh, plan. Right there, enable game mode, ultimate performance power plan, bam. Now watch. Now we're going to click on show additional plans, because it automatically popped it up for us for power options. We're going to click on show additional plans. And lo and behold, there it is, ultimate performance. Provides ultimate performance on higher end PCs. So after we do this, we're gonna click on change plan settings. You can adjust this if you want. I like to put the turn off the display to at least 30 minutes. That's just me though. Change advanced power settings, click on this. And then what we're gonna click on, make sure if you have an SSD and you have Windows installed to an SSD, make sure this is zero. You do not want this to have anything else except zero if you have an SSD installed, okay? Okay. So, that's fine. Uh, the only other thing we're going to change is under USB settings. Change this, USB selective suspend setting. We're going to disable this. Trust me when I say this is uh, useful because sometimes, like, especially if you're streaming, sometimes it might, like, your, your webcam might just stop working or freeze, but your mic will continue to work. They're both USB. That's why it's called selective suspend. Windows like automatically choose what USB devices to suspend whenever it fucking wants. So it's just best to disable that completely. Processor, yeah, the only other thing we're gonna do is under processor power management, we're gonna make sure minimum processor state is 100 and maximum is 100. So they are, which is awesome. What this does, it literally makes your processor run, not really at full power, but full speed at all times, which is well, what you want because it'll also speed up windows uh, combined with the fact you have an ssd oh yeah you're you're, gonna, you're fucking your your operating system computer's gonna be zooming so yeah okay save yada 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 save changes and then we're good on that another thing you can do to speed up your computer via booting it for example the last thing you want is when you boot up windows then once you sign into your desktop you have to wait on all the other programs to run first before you're able to start anything else on your computer especially if you use your computer for work. We don't want that to occur. Older versions of Windows, what you would had have done is search for what's called msconfig. So you type in msconfig for Microsoft configuration. So msconfig.exe, you would click on it, and then once it would you know pop up, you would go to startup. Then you would disable programs from starting on Windows startup. But nowadays, in newer versions of Windows, especially Windows 10, 11, and I'm sure probably later versions of Windows as well, you have to run Task Manager. So you can either do it from here and click on Open Task Manager. You can hold Control, Alt, and press Delete, then click on Task Manager. Or under the taskbar at the bottom here, you can right click and then click on Task Manager. <laughs> Several ways to get to it. Then once Task Manager's up, you'll click on the Startup tab, and then, lo and behold. So, I will warn you, only disable stuff that you know can be disabled. I'm sure you're smart enough to figure it out, okay? But you don't want to accidentally disable stuff that you know is required for Windows to start up. Now, normally, why this matters with any program that you disable with this is because... You're basically telling Windows, hey, don't run when I might want to do other stuff as soon as I boot up and log on to my computer. I will run them later manually. Because you can always run them manually by just double-clicking on the program that you're wanting to run. 
You do not need to have it running at Windows Startup. This does not stop the programs from ever running. It just stops them from running at Startup. So again, only disable programs that you know Windows does not need to run at Startup. Also, be aware that there are other programs that have their own option. Some free virus scanners, some free programs, even paid ones. Make sure to pay attention and go into the individual program's settings and disable the option run at Windows Startup. I can show you an example. I have this any spyware right here, Super Anaspar Free Edition, I will explain later. When you run it, if you go to System Tools and then click on Preferences, what does this say? Start Super Anaspar with Windows. You make sure this is unchecked. So just be aware that there are programs that have their own separate Windows startup option you're most likely going to have to disable if they're not listed within Windows Task Manager here. Another thing you can do to speed up your system considerably, and this mainly has to do with fixing operating system corrupted files. If there's any type of system files that are corrupted within Windows that are slowing your computer down. What I'm about to show you will fix that, but will also fix any type of error you might receive when trying to install certain apps or certain programs. For example, there might be a program you downloaded in .appx file format extension and when you double click on it to install it it might pop up an error that says class not registered so to fix this you would actually run cmd and i've already showed you how to do that a few times during this video after you run as administrator a command prompt what you'll type in is sfc then hit the space bar then put forward slash which is the same key that should have the question mark on it <laughs> right next to the right shift key forward slash scan now so s-c-a-n-n-o-w do this and then windows will automatically find and replace any type of corrupted system files as well as actually fixing any program installation issues with certain applications and of course the icing on the cake to increase your graphics card speed and performance even more you can also go into the nvidia control panel and change a setting under your manage 3d settings in the top left here and then scroll down under texture filtering dash quality and change this to high performance okay like i said this is the icing on the cake if you want even higher performance graphical wise we already discussed earlier the gpu rebar resizable bar support within the bios and windows i showed you the different game ready and studio drivers for nvidia graphics cards and now i'm showing you the if you want to take your graphics card performance even further and again this is not including if you want to take it even further than that and actually overclock your graphics card but like i mentioned earlier in this video do not overclock your graphics card or your processor unless you liquid cool either one of them the last thing you want either one of them to do is overheat because of the overclocking the ram you don't have to liquid cool ram you can overclock that just fine so don't worry about that Next thing we're going to install before, we, and this is way before, especially if you're wanting to install Microsoft Store on Microsoft Xbox Game Bar and all that shit. Don't worry about installing that shit right now. We're going to install these two things first. Extremely important. That is under the highly recommended to install. So Visual C++ readables, and these are extremely important to have anyway because, well, especially when you install PC games, they're, they're going to make you install some anyway. So you might as well install all of them because it's all in one. Type in 16 for Visual C++, hit enter, and you'll notice actually three options, but we're actually going to do both one and two. It's really weird. You can do one or the other, but you're not going to be able to install all of them unless you do both one and two. So first we're going to do one, you know, type in one for number one at the top, it's green right there, one, and we're going to hit enter, and then there you go. There's a C++, click on next. La -da -da. Everything is a okay. Oh yeah, sometimes like if nothing pops up uh, at the bottom here, I'm gonna move out of the way. Part of the installation. Sometimes you might say, okay, why and there's nothing working? Pay always paste into the taskbar in case stuff like this happens. Click on it, and as you see, it's 
it's been done. So finish. Literally what I did is I just clicked on the installation window at the bottom. That's all I did. Now I gotta do it again, but do number two. So number, type in 16 again for the Visual C++ redistributables. Hit enter. And then we're gonna do two. Type in two and then enter. This one's gonna be faster. It's, it's a silent install. See, silent install, please wait. So it's gonna install those. They must, might be a lot smaller in size. Done. All right, next thing we need to do, and this is also important, especially if we're gonna be installing PC games, is 17. So type in 17 right there, direct X, highly recommended. So 17 direct X, hit enter. And you can do either one, doesn't matter. I like to do the online store, installer because why not work connect the internet anyway? So hit one for online, the online star and then hit enter. Here's direct X setup. I accept, next. Don't install the Bing bar, we're gonna uncheck that. Next, and this also is probably, it's gonna take a minute. Nope, nope, hit next again. All right, there we go. All right, it's done. Awesome. There's a few things that we want to disable within the group policy, and this is useful for when you want to install certain programs that you actually need, like free programs. For example, sometimes some video converters like Format Factory, or it's just an example. Format Factory is not really a program that did it, but there was a situation where I had to install certain programs on Windows, and then Windows Defender, it's actually called Windows Smart Screen, we need to turn that off. And what it does, it basically pops up being like Windows prevented this app from running. It prevented it from being installed and stuff like that when you're the one actually installing it. And we need to turn it off because like I said, some programs are not harmful to Windows and we still need them. So it's like a considered a false positive. Virus protector, protectors and virus scanners do the exact same shit. Like if you have trainers, like they give you cheat codes for games or mods for your uh, PC games like that. Programs like Malware Bytes, for example, another free virus scanner and stuff. Programs like that will actually label them as viruses, but they're not, okay? So it's, it's kind of like that Windows smart screen does the exact same stupid shit. It, it can sometimes detect certain trainers or certain programs you're actually running that, ha that has literally no harmful effect on Windows. And it, and it says, oh, no, 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 we're going to stop this from running and shit like that. And it's fucking stupid. So it is literally stupid to have it on. We're going to turn that off. And I believe Windows 11 has it. If not, we can search for it, for it manually. But either way, we're going to search for it. We're going to type in what's called GP Edit. Yep, Edit Group Policy. Now, if this doesn't pop up, you can actually just type in group policy editor, but it popped up. So right here, control panel, click on this and you'll put, you're presented with this fun shit. We're going to go under user configuration and we're going to go under advent administrative templates, but instead of click on the folder, we're going to click on the arrow here on the left hand side of the folder. Then we're going to go under windows components. So click on the arrow of that and then scroll down to windows defender, smart screen. We're gonna click on the arrow on that one, and then we're gonna click on Microsoft Edge. Now, even though it says Microsoft Edge, okay, which is basically an internet browser, it's actually for all Windows. It's for the operating system itself. That's why I said whenever you, uh, sometimes it can even block a download from happening in your browser, which is also stupid, because if you're trying to download something that you actually need, then you don't need Windows blocking it. So it's best to disable smart screen for basically two reasons. To stop it from blocking downloads that you're downloading yourself and to also stop it from, for false positiving, I guess, if you will, your, like I said, trainers and mods for your games and certain programs you're installing that have no harm <laughs> on Windows. So on the Microsoft, it'd be Microsoft Edge, even though it's actually the operating system. So we're gonna click on Configure Windows Defender Smart Screen. You're gonna click on it on the right hand side. And then right here, edit policy setting. We're gonna click on policy setting. And as you see here, this is not configure. What we're gonna do is we're gonna click on disabled. Okay, click on disabled here. Then we're gonna click on apply and hit okay or just hit okay, okay. There's also uh, prevent bypassing Windows Defender prompts for sites. That's what I was talking about too. When you're downloading shit, it'll pop up saying Windows blocked the download or Chrome blocked what the fuck ever. So under edit policy setting on prevent bypassing, we're going to disable that one as well. We're going to disable both these. Don't need them. Really all, all you need for that. So I says this is that that was specifically for your gamers and streamers out there, video uh, producers, editors out there.
Okay, you're welcome. Especially like I said, if you're wanting to use tr trainers and mods for your games and stuff like that, you cannot have that shit on because, yeah, or it's it's Windows is going to prevent you from downloading shit and, and installing certain shit that you need for those type of things. So, another setting you can disable, and I'm sure you'd want to, as it stops you from being able to delete, drag and drop, or access any type of file or folder on your computer by popping up, are you sure, are you sure? So you gotta click on yes, 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 after every single thing you do on your computer. Again, I'm sure you've heard of it, user account control. We have to disable that completely. So to do that, we need to go into our actual control panel, the Windows control panel this time. I have classic shell install, which is the classic start menu. You know, start is back, start all back, pretty much all the same thing. You can also get to it by using these and then actually clicking on the avatar at the top. But we're going to go to the control panel, so I'll show you how to do it anyway. If your control panel is set up like this, like I demonstrated earlier, then you can, under the view by, hit this, and then click on categories. Or... If you're already on small icons, you can just click on user accounts. Either way, if you switch it to category, just go to the user account section, all right? Under small icon, that's why I like to keep it on. Click on user accounts. And then right here, change user account control settings. Click this. And then under this old scroll thing here, we need to make sure it's all the way down to never notify. That way, every time you're deleting a file or deleting a folder, dragging and dropping a file or folder, whatever, doing anything on your computer, it won't keep popping up. Are you sure? Are you sure? Are you sure? Yeah, motherfucker, I'm sure I wouldn't have done it in the first fucking place. And as, as you've seen here, like I explained before we downloaded this ISO version of Windows, I specifically told you that this version of Windows, this modified fast one, does not have Microsoft Store or the Microsoft Xbox Game Bar and all that stuff in it after we install it. We have to manually add it later. And as you can see right here, number 10, Microsoft Store and Xbox Console Companion, Game Bar, whatever, you can still add them via the Ghost Toolbox here. I'm going to go ahead and get the Microsoft Store because I'll show you how to get that. Especially for those that want it to uh, type in 10. So like I say it's all self-explanatory hit 10 and then the one we want is obviously the Microsoft Store. See literally the only fucking one that really matters. Type in one, hit enter and it'll still download the Microsoft Store for you. So let's do that real quick. This will also, like I said, give you the Xbox companion as well. Like I said, it's all self-explanatory. It can even do the same thing for the Xbox Game Bar, which is separate. All right, so I have the Microsoft Store and Xbox Console Companion installed now. Now, you might notice that it's nowhere to be found. Unfortunately, you have to actually search for it. So you go to Start, you type in, you just type in Store if you want. There it is, Microsoft Store. Bam. So you can, I'm going to go ahead and put that in the taskbar right there. So click on Pin the Taskbar. That way it's, again, at the bottom, as you can see, on the taskbar. So... All right, next thing we're actually going to be getting is our virus scanners. Any viruses are not always beneficial, despite what you think. For example, I'll tell you right now from experience, like I said, I've known computers since I was four or five years old, and I'm 32 now, and I will tell you right now that Norton and McAfee and basically any paid antivirus software is a waste of money. So I had a situation where I ran both of them on one of my family's computers. This tells you all you need to know. They had both. They paid for both. That not only do they conflict with each other, but a waste of money in the first place. And I'll let me explain why. But they had them both on there, so I was like, "Fuck it, I'll run virus scans on both of them just to just to experiment." Right? I ran McAfee the M McAfee scan. Then I ran the Norton scan. Then I ran what's called Super Anti Spyware Free Edition. You heard that right, free edition. You do not have to pay for it. There's no subscription. It is completely, it's considered freeware. Basically programs that you just download for free. Well, anyways, so I shit you not. Norton paid one, found one virus. McAfee paid software, paid antivirus, found three. Guess how many super anti spyware free edition caught? 463. I am Dead fucking serious. The free one found one big major worm, 10 or 20 Trojans, 5 or 10 keyloggers, and spyware, adware, malware, and fucking tracking cookies. And Norton and McAfee, the paid software only found one to three viruses in total and that's it? Are you fucking kidding me? That's just 
uh, food for thought. The thing is, we do not want to rely on Windows Defender's scanner when scanning for viruses. We are going to have two different programs. One's called Super Anti-Spyware Free Edition I mentioned earlier, and the other one's called Malwarebytes. So I'm gonna show you how to install those real quick. So let's do Super Anti-Spyware Free Edition first. Super Anti-Spyware.com right here. So Free Edition and scroll down, click on download free edition, the red button. Okay, save it, go ahead and run it. Next, I agree, and next, next. While this is doing that, let's go ahead and go to the, back to Google. And uh, okay, click on Super Mario Spyware right here, and then just click on next. You don't have to put your email in, just put next. And right here, this is important, don't hit next this time this time we want to uncheck the submitted system diagnostic if you keep this check and hit next your computer is going to start being sluggish like right away because it's going to start doing some shit or whatever that you technically don't need super inspire to do for you so just uh uncheck the submitted system diagnostic and keep check for recent keep that one checked next finished now it's going to pop up this screen just click on decline so once Super Power pops up under right here, database, it says click here to check for updates. Click this. It should download if there, if it did already done so. It should download the most up to date virus definitions, like new new viruses that came out or some shit they could scan for and get rid of. After you've done that, click on System Tools. We're gonna click on Preferences, and then we're going to right here start Super Power with Windows. We're gonna uncheck this. Then we're going to hit done, done, and if you guys want to know how to scan with it, you click on scan this computer. And then the cool thing about the scanner though is you can speed it up if you want to. So if you, cl you can click on activate scan boost, rescue scan will be the fastest obviously, see maximum boost. You can click on activate scan boost and click on high boost. I personally don't recommend doing this if you're going to be PC gaming or video editing or video encoding or stuff like that because it'll slow down those applications. But if you're not doing anything and you're wanting to scan for viruses sometimes, whatever, then having high boost on is extremely awesome. Now, if your computer is really infected, if you think it's extremely infected, then you can do this one, the rescue scan, which is, like I said, the highest one. But I usually just do the high boost. So after you do that, you just click on complete scan and then it'll start fucking doing all its thing. Okay. Obviously, I already found tracking cookies, but it's fine. I don't really care. Scanning is not complete. You wish continue? No. Or yes, I mean. <laughs> and this shit will pop up. Or check, <laughs> do, do not show me this again, so check that. No, go away. Sometimes it's that type of shit. So can, just cancel, yes. I don't care about to do all this right shit right now. Uh, the only thing that sucks about Super Mario Spyware and what I don't like about it is the fact that this right here. Okay, you'll see this little yellow bug. It might freak you out. Oh no, that's a virus. No, that's Super Mario Spyware. When you first double click on it, it might start down here. It's really fucking weird. Uh, that's just how it runs. So if you double click on it, watch. You'll show a splash screen, okay? But the program won't pop up. So you might think, what the fuck? It, you, it's, like I said, it starts down here where the where the date and time is or anything. So you click on the arrow and then right here, the yellow bug. That's super inspiring. You just click on it one time and it brings it up. Out of all the virus scanners I have ever used in my whole life, this program right here, Super Inspire Free Edition, always finds the most. And it, and it finds everything. It finds more malware by does. It, it's the best, literally the best virus scanner I have ever had in my life. And I will never stop using it. Whenever you're scanning for viruses, make sure that it is not going to remove stuff that you actually need, especially when they're false positives. So again, you uncheck it. Make sure it's uncheck, unchecking it so it doesn't accidentally remove it. It thinks it's a Trojan or a virus and it's not. Same thing for potentially unwanted programs and Super Honest Spyware. DaVinci Resolve Studio Patcher. DaVinci Resolve Studio is my video editing program. And it's detecting one of the files for it as a virus. Come on. <laughs> so you uncheck that one too. So anyways, next one is obviously malware bytes because it's still useful to have because, you know, sometimes having one scanner, like I said, not enough, and I proved that. So, downward malware, malwarebytes.com, malware removal, free download, click on it. Okay. Uh, and it's okay to have two different virus scanners. They're not memorable because they're not going to be running in the background. Click on MB setup after we downloaded it, run it. 
click on advanced options. I like that because that way I can see if there's anything else. So it's not that one. Actually, I'm going to exit out of this because now the only thing I hate about Mowerbytes and its installation is sometimes it freezes and it won't ins go all the way through. And I don't know why it does that. They need to fix that. But either way, we're going to, I want to right click. I'm going to run as administrator. Hopefully that will, will stop it from freezing. But click on install. I'll just click on install. Uh, I just use, like I said, I usually do uh, custom installations because sometimes programs will install extra programs you don't really need. And this is why you have to pay attention. I know like sometimes a lot of you guys get ahead of yourselves and you're impatient. You just want to hit next, 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 next to install your shit. But you still have to pay attention to some programs you're installing. Otherwise, it's going to install extra shit you don't, they don't need. Like Bing bars for your fucking web browsers or separate fucking like editing programs that you're never going to use. And they like, say so you always have to pay attention to that shit. So me or my family, it's a personal computer. So next. And then now it's going to install. Hopefully it does not fucking freeze. Like I said, I've, ha I've had a situation of past where it literally, f it literally fucking froze. Like even after waiting 10 minutes, it fucking was stuck at a percentage. And it would not do do nothing. So I would, even on a shitty ass computer, it should take no longer than 10 minutes. Okay, done. So cool, sweet. Click on done. Here's more bytes. Go ahead and drag it over here. Should burn spotware. Okay, now this one is a little different. Go on get started. No, click on maybe later. Uh, just click on get started. <laughs> X, X. Now it says a trial. You don't have to buy it if you don't want to. You can actually convert this to a freeware program like Super Nintendo Spyware, and that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna click on settings, the gear icon on Marobytes, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to account. Click on account, and then right here license key because it's it's a trial. We're gonna click on deactivate. Click on deactivate. Click on deactivate, and then now right there status always free always free okay so now we have the free edition so i said this is completely different like you know super on spyware and most applications have a free edition then they have a paid edition well malware bytes actually has it all wrapped up into one if you don't want to pay for it you can actually convert the one installation into the free edition kind of cool more programs need to do stuff do that it's kind of neat we'll save on downloads with malware bytes though we're, we're going to do uh there's a few settings we're going to actually disable yeah under security windows startup we don't want to to start up with windows so disable that uh and right here scan options we want all of them we want all four of these we want the root kits within archives artificial intelligence and expert system algorithms so have make sure all four of these are ticked and they're on so everything i like to you can do dark if you want i like dark so i'm gonna turn it dark and uh, count about, we're good. All right, so that's all you need to do with Marl Bytes. Now, like I mentioned earlier, with, uh, I did mention this about Marl Bytes before, exit out of this. The only thing I do not like about Marl Bytes is, is if you have trainers, like if, you, if you're a PC gamer and you have trainers or mods or you have other applications that you are installing to your computer, sometimes, sometimes when you run this virus scanner of Marl Bytes, it will literally false positive those and flag those as viruses, even though they're not. If, for example, if you have God of War for PC, right, and you download a trainer to, you know, it's like if you want to give yourself infinite health or infinite uh, stats or what the fuck ever, right, for God of War on you know, PC, then you'd have to actually, oh, when, when, like, so whenever you're on the scan, then it'll actually come up, oh, God of, so it'll say malware or pup, you know, like I said, it'll flag it as malware. The trainer, the fucking cheat code application, and it's not. Just keep in mind when you're using malware bytes that if it label, if it shows them, if it shows your trainers like that, make sure to read the full URL. Especially if you have, for example, a program called Advanced System Care. That's a cleaning program. We're going to be installing that in, in a little bit as well as other clean applications. But just keep in mind that both Super Anti Spyware and malware bytes sometimes can create what's called false positives. And what this means is, is that it can detect certain things on your computer and label them or flag them as viruses when they're not viruses. So for example, if you're a gamer and you download trainers or mods for your games, sometimes these virus scanners can flag them as 
viruses when they're not. And they have no harmful effect on your computer whatsoever. So you have to pay attention when you're scanning for viruses, what it's detecting. The last thing you want to do is have it accidentally delete something that you still use on your computer. Okay, so for example, look, there's a Kingdom Hearts trainer for a chain of memories that I have on my PC here. A Kingdom Hearts 3 trainer, a Kingdom Hearts 2 trainer, and a Call of Duty Infinite Warfare trainer right here. This one especially is not a virus because this trainer actually paid for. Some trainers are free and some are paid. I went over all of that at the very, 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 very beginning. <laughs> Uh, of this video whenever it's detecting stuff that is not a virus for example right here it's detecting so I say you know uncheck that one I have my Kingdom Hearts is detecting my Kingdom Hearts trainers as viruses too none of those are viruses either so uncheck those but yeah you just go under a location and see what it's talking about where it is on your computer because like I said last thing you want it to do is accidentally remove these that you want on your computer <laughs> especially if you have for example a program called advanced system care that's a cleaning program we're going to be installing that in, in a little bit as well as other clean applications but just the installation files of that alone more bytes will detect that program as a virus too and it's not <laughs> like i said you just have to make sure whatever whatever it finds make sure to read wherever it's at like the location of the file and make sure that whatever is flagging as virus that isn't make sure to un check them okay uncheck them you don't want to quarantine your trainers and mods for your games see what i'm trying to say <laughs> otherwise you're not gonna be able to use them you're gonna have to re-download them again and reuse the mods and you know re like i said re-download the uh, mods and trainers and to reuse them because because mod robots will really delete them so <sighs> all right so now we're gonna get our cleaning programs we're gonna get what's called c cleaner and we're also gonna get advanced system care so CCleaner download in uh, Google, CCleaner.com. Actually, it's short for crap cleaner. Just hit OK here. And then uh, free right here, the free one. Click on download. They do that on purpose. They don't have the link color coded, but they have the paid ones. <laughs> they really want you to pay for their shit. So I click on save. Okay, actually install the CCleaner now. Uh, click on customize. So I said it's how it doesn't install shit that you don't need it to. Uncheck that start menu and the recycle bin shit. Desktop and intelligent cookie scans fine. Click on install. Click on view uh, the view release notes. You uncheck that. Click on run cleaner. All right. Can I click on continue? No. You click on decline. See the optional offers. So I'm trying to say usually they have these during the installation. I guess they switched it up now. They fucking pop it up sometimes during running the application. So click on decline. Start. All right, cool. First things first with this program, we need to click on options. Privacy. We're going to uncheck help improve this app. We're going to uncheck see offers and possible upgrades. Why are we doing this? Well, when you're doing shit on your computer, you don't want shit on the bottom right hand corner just popping up out of fucking nowhere, do you? Didn't think so. And you also don't want your computer to be sluggish with background apps doing shit they're not supposed to be doing while you're doing shit, do you? Didn't think so. The next thing we're going to do is under updates, uncheck both these, send notifications when there's a new version, keep CCleaner update automatically. Here's the thing. You do not need to have anything installed or updated automatically on a computer or a console. If you do, it usually slows down your game performances and video performances and stuff. So your best bet is to make is to disable all of that because here's the thing it will let you know if it has an update when you run it. So say you use C Cleaner right now, clean your computer, right? Then you haven't cleaned your computer in like a month. You double click C Cleaner again to clean your computer again. It will then pop up letting you know if there's an update or not. You don't need it to automatically update. You don't need it to send you notifications. Hey, there's an update. You don't need that. It will tell you if there's an update when you literally double click on the program. I'm just trying to do everything I can to give you guys the fastest computer possible overall within Windows, okay? So just trust me. So anyways, so those are both unchecked. Okay, click through this smart clean shit. You don't need smart cleaning. So see, tell me when, no, you don't gotta tell me shit. I will clean when I wanna clean. 
So uncheck that one, and then also uncheck smart cleaning. Smart cleaning allows C cleaner to be ran in the fucking background all the damn time. You don't need that shit. So uncheck smart cleaning. It says warning. Are you sure? Yes, I am sure. Scheduling. No, don't care. Don't care. Don't care. Don't care. No. Cancel. I'll fucking care. It's just saying I need Google Chrome needed to be closed before I can see what cookies it had the need to be clean. But I'm not cleaning cookies right now. Okay, so settings are good. Now we're going to go to tools. Next thing we're going to do is we're actually going to go to system restore. What I really like about this CCleaner software is it actually allows you to delete system restore points. Trust me when I say those are useful because you don't really need, honestly, you don't even need more than two system restore points. If you want to get technical about it the reason why being able to delete system restore points are so useful is the fact that system restore points are like 10 to 20 gigs a piece they can add up on your hard drive pretty quickly under tools click on system restore and then see how many we have it's just the one so we're good on that but if there was more than two then the ones that are below the second one, you can highlight all of them and click on remove and then click on yes. And it'll remove those system restore points. And trust me, I say you don't need them. You don't really need driver updater. You can't, I mean, can't if you want, but like I said, I, I, I still highly recommend that you update your drivers through the fucking motherboard manufacturer's website and get the, your updates through them instead. There's also utilities through the motherboard manufacturer's website that you can download that will also, uh, you can run too to get your driver updates. You do not need like driver booster, driver easy, or all that fucking shit. So, under cleaner here, you can, I just leave everything as is. You don't want to mess up something, you to, uh, clean something that you don't necessarily have to clean. If you don't know what any of this shit is, leave them alone. Leave everything that's checked at default. You can leave all that the same. Under applications, I usually remove stuff from defenders and client temp files. I do do that. And I also do the game experiment. So, yeah, so all this is fine. That's checked. And then all this over here, leave all this at default checked. And then all you have to do, obviously, is just click on analyze. And then it'll find what you need to do. If a uh, browser's running, then it'll tell you, hey, you need to get rid of it first. So you can click on do not show this message again and click on yes. You can have them close Chrome for you. Close it in the background. And then I'll imagine that look, 310 megabyte of trash in your computer that you, you don't need. And you can click on, then from there, you can click on run cleaner. The select file will be deleted. Are you sure? Again, do not show us message to me again. Check that. Click on continue. All right. So then there's also uh, then registry works in the same concept. You just click on registry, click on scan for issues, and then it finds all the fucking registry issues that's wrong. After it's done, okay, 100%, you click on review selected issues, and then do you want to back up anything in a registry uh, before making changes? You can if you want. It's up to you. I usually don't. Uh, so I click on no, and then I click you click on fix all selected issues. Okay, but I'm not gonna do that right now. And that's pretty much how you see cleaner. You can also do the health check one. The health check one does everything like the the custom and the registry wrapped up into one technically. So if you want to do that too, you can. But if you do this and then this, it gets more in depth. So it'll scan for more stuff if that makes sense. So it's up to you. The health check one is more like a faster, faster clean, but it's not going to clean everything you need cleaned out. So next thing we need to install, there's our cleaning software. Uh, well, one of them. Next thing we need to do is when you get advanced system care. That's one program I do like from them. I, like I said, I do not like their driver booster and I will not rely on that for my drivers. So uh, free download, downloads. What's this ultimate? This ultimate, hold on. Free, hey, there it is. Advanced system carefree. This, there it is. I'm not on the wrong one. There. Make sure it's, yeah, okay. So it's not the ultimate one. That's the paid one. We got to make sure it's advanced system carefree. <laughs> Click on it, run it. Again, like we did last time right here. Look, see? Got to pay attention. You got to install shit you don't need on your computer. Uncheck this, uncheck this. Click on custom install. See if there's other shit that it's going to install you don't need. Or other shit it's going to do. Load at Windows startup. No. Click on yes to disable it you uncheck that one too uh, i don't really care to pin the taskbar so i'll just do desktop icon so there you go so all those uncheck desktop icon install no thanks click on no thanks so it says other shit no thanks click on next that install no thanks <laughs> uncheck learn more online click on finish and then here's advanced system care now here's the thing this thing bar over here is going to pop up right click on this click on exit 
I don't need that and you certainly don't need it running at Windows either so we're gonna change a few things again so under these bars up here click on options okay we're going to go to settings right here click on settings See, there's that fucking notification shit we're going, to, we're going to disable too. So, eggs out of that shit. Okay, right here. Enable performance monitor and load at Windows Startup. Uncheck this. This is that bar that we just exit out of. Okay, every time Windows turns on, that will pop up. So, uncheck that. It's useless. Or most people. Minimize system trail program is closed. No. <laughs> uncheck that one. If you hit the X, it should close the program. It shouldn't minimize. If I want to minimize it, I'd hit the minimize. Fucking stupid <laughs> how some of these programs are laid out. Now let's click on anti spyware. No, no, there's nothing there, 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 nothing there. Right here under auto update, just like we do for CCleaner, click on update manually. Like I said, every time you run the program, it should let you know if there's an update or not, okay? You don't need to be notified there's there's an update. It will notify you when you run the program. Update manually. See right here. See it's right there. Check for updates when program is launched. See? Okay, RAM. No, no. Right here, notifications. Turn all of this off. You don't need any of these on. For notifications, uncheck all of them all of them hit okay now this one is a lot easier you can use ai mode which use artificial intelligence or you can use manual mode manual mode you have to select what you want it to search for okay to clean ai mode actually searches everything for you i like the ai mode it's awesome but yeah it'll set scan i'll just do that now for this one you click on scan it ain't gonna take very long this computer's fairly quick it's still an eight core processor with the extremely powerful graphics card, so it shouldn't take too long. This is why having more cores in a processor also helps because the more cores you have in the processor, the, the faster multitasking is, which is what s scanners, well, like, they excel in. If you have more cores in a, in a, with a processor, then it can, it, literally your scans will be faster. And also an SSD helps too, but that, that just speeds up the program. That doesn't really speed up the scanning. The scanning... The processing, aka your CPU, your processing unit, see what I'm saying? The processing within your programs is all done by the processor. So this, how fast this goes, is all dependent on how many cores you have in your processor. I guarantee if I run this on my 32 core processor, this would have been done already. <laughs> Easily. But eight cores ain't too bad. It'll definitely be slow on a quad core dual core processor. <laughs> now the outdated drivers you need to ignore. There is no outdated drivers because we install all the drivers from the motherboard manufacturer's website. That's what I was trying to tell you. This is the same company that has Driver Booster. And Driver Booster will even show you, say, hey, look, there's updates to your drivers. No, there isn't. Because if there was, if there was, then those updates would be on the motherboard manufacturer's website. The last thing you want to do is install an update to a driver that doesn't exist pretty much. It's pretty much taking like an up update driver from another motherboard or from another something. I don't know where the fuck they're pulling either ass from, but yeah, you don't want to rely on that. So we're going to click on, after this is done on the left hand side here, we're going to go through them. And you don't want to just, you don't want to do auto with this, this one, because it's, it, it will enable stuff too and within Windows that it thinks that you need when you don't. So it's good to go through them. Not all of them, just certain ones. The ones that particular I'm talking about is system optimizations. Those are usually all fine. You can keep all of those the same, but if this, since this is a modified version of Windows, I would just uncheck the ones that say NA and keep and leave them alone. Because chances are, like Ghost, Ghost Spectre probably already did this for you for this modified version of Windows, and by adding the value to it, it's going to take longer for certain things to happen. So if I were you, like I said, I would uncheck the ones that have NA as the current value and leave those alone. But if they're decreasing the value, that's better. You can keep them checked. Well, show translucent rec or selection rectangle, just like I told you, that's good for uh, certain programs to work and also good for if you're wanting to like use a video as a background, like a ba background wallpaper for your desktop. So I want that on. This is why you have to go through some things. So I want that on. It's saying recommendation zero. You know, ones and zeros, one for yes, zero for no. Well, I want yes, so we're unchecking this. We're keeping it at its, at its current value. System configuration, let's go through that one. 
that one's fine. It's lower value. That one's lower value. That's fine. Okay, so these NA, all the NAs uncheck. Accelerate the display. Accelerate, yes, it's, it's decreasing the value, so that's good. Disable autoplay for removable devices to avoid virus detection. Optimize refresh strategies NA, so uncheck that one. Damn it. Windows services. Okay, that's those are fine too. Now, now, but here's the thing: if you don't know what they are, then just leave them alone. Leave them checked or unchecked, whatever they are, just leave them alone. Okay. If if the values that you're seeing is lower lower than the current value, then keep them checked. If they're not, then uncheck them. So I'm trying to say this is gonna go from two to one, so that's lower value, therefore speeding up whatever the fuck this is, so that's fine. This one's boost priority, it's a lower value, therefore speeding that up. So that's see my point. Now the only time changing from a high value to a low value doesn't make any sense is when it's ones and zeros. So like if it's the value is one right here, the show translucent light selection rectangle, if it's a one and it's saying to a zero. You might think, oh, cool, so it's a lower number, so it's going to speed up that process. No. This is different. This is more like a yes or no, because computers usually view data as ones and zeros. So one means yes, zero means no, okay? But I, I want translucent selection rectangle on, so I, I want to keep it as yes for one. See what I'm saying? Now, if it's bigger numbers than that, then the one and zero doesn't apply, okay? So... Like from 200,000 to 150,000, that's fine. Leave that on. Two to one, that's fine. It's like that. But anytime it's from one to zero, or zero to one, it usually indicates yes or no. Internet improvements right here. Current values two, recommendations to. Wait a minute. Like I say, so that's why you have to sometimes read what they do. So max connections per. Yeah, you want those to increase. That's for internet. So if you want more connections because it can give you faster internet speed. Yeah, definitely leave those checked. Land request buffer. Uh, this is not optimized. So all, all the internet stuff's fine. Outdated drivers. Don't think that it'll automatically fix these. Okay, it won't. Any of the explanation points usually won't. You have to do it manually after you select, you know, this left side. But just like I told you with drivers, as long as you download all your drivers from the motherboard manufacturer's web website for your motherboard, you're fine. You do not need fucking to update your drivers through system based of some care, driver booster, or separate programs. Now, if you do want to use a separate program to search for updated drivers, then you want to use the program from the motherboard manufacturer's website. It would it'd usually be listed under utilities. Util one or two of the utilities will uh, search the motherboard manufacturer's servers, which is what you want. It's the only, should be the only server you should be getting your drivers from. Outdated software, that doesn't fucking matter either. Spyware threats is fine. It don't fucking matter either. System weaknesses. Now this is what I was talking about. Windows Smart Screen. We disabled this ahead of time. Uncheck this. We don't want to re-enable it. <laughs> <laughs> remote assistance now this one can disable if you want remote assistant services are are useful for like if you're wanting like i don't know the geek squad or like another man microsoft needs to access your computer and stuff like that then you would need to have this on i believe so anyway there might be other ways to remote access like and i know a program called team viewer you can use that without even needing this on that's probably why it says the disable is recommendation anyway so we're gonna go ahead and disable that one. And updates from more than one place, disable that too. We only need updates from fucking Windows Update. Why the f we don't, yeah. <laughs> so, so let's go ahead and click on fix. It'll, it should fix everything that we selected and ignore the ones that we unselected. All right, done. Just click on back, finish. It'll say there's more stuff you need to fix. You upgrade a pro. No, we don't give a shit. Now, if you do want to uninstall certain apps that you really don't need, like I know a lot of this shit I'm not going to run. Office, Solitaire, Spotify. I don't know what the fuck this shit is. Clipchamp. I'm probably going to uninstall all those. So you click on settings again, and then you click on apps, and then you can uninstall or apps and features. And then this is where you can scroll down and then click on whatever you need to install. Click on the three dots and then click on uninstall. Now, one more thing. Talk about in uninstallation. There might be situations where you install a program and the installation never finishes, but you also cannot uninstall it. Now, the only way you can fix errors like that is you do have to have 
a program, another program from IOBit that I do like, and it's called IOBit Uninstaller. And what it does is actually, it, use, it tries to run the original uninstaller of the program you installed to uninstall it. If that fails, it will actually go into the win, uh, Windows registry and settings and forcefully remove the program and all of its settings and all the files to it. That way you can proceed to try to reinstall the program and stuff like that. If like, like I said, if you had a situation like maybe you installed a program and the installation failed and and, the, and Windows shows that the program was installed, but it wasn't installed all the way, you'd like double click it, it won't run or like, it's just weird shit like that. So yeah, IOBit uninstaller, there it is. And then download that one, it is free. So IOBit uninstaller free, desktop save. So uh, uncheck both these, the install again. Then we're gonna obviously click on custom install again. Desktop only, desktop icon only, click install. No, thank you. Next. No, thank you. Finish. All right, so you see here, this is what I was talking about. So if you, whatever program that refuses to uninstall or it's given an error saying it won't un uninstall, you'll use this type of program to forcefully remove it from your computer anyway. Like I said, you'll click on it, and then you'll cl uh, click on the trash bin or hit uninstall, and then it'll actually uninstall it. Try to do the, you know, like I said, the normal route, and then if that fails, it will still forcefully go through the registry and find all the files related to that program and f literally permanently and forcefully delete those. But again, just like the other advanced system care and CCleaner and Mauer Bytes and Super Inspireware, we have to make sure we go in the settings and make sure that shit's not running or notifications don't pop up and all that shit so click on the three dashes up here click on settings there you go notifications is the first thing i fucking seen and nope 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 control panel and you can re you still do it the old-fashioned route by going to programs and features just like what you're familiar with you can still uninstall stuff through this but by having io io bit uninstaller you have a powerful uninstall option now highlight and say hit install and slowly hit powerful uninstall Resi right there, residual le files left by other uninstalls on installation, yeah. Leftovers from an uninstalled program. That one, that, so this one and these two you wanna keep on. Those are, those are uh, extremely important notifications. Like when you when you install something or uninstall something, IOBit will come up with, with an notification, so you know, like at the bottom right hand corner, and it'll say, hey, there's uh, files left over. Now, you have to be careful too, be, though, with this, because sometimes, like for example, if you install a graphics card driver, right, like GeForce Experience, for example, and stuff, and then you uninstall it, right, and then then you reinstall a new graphics card driver, like an most up-to-date one, sometimes IOBit uninstaller will still pop up saying, hey, there's residual files left over. Now, the problem with this is, is it is it you think it's talking about the previous driver that you uninstalled, but it's not. What will happen is if you go ahead and hit the notification, it'll fucking, it'll really delete, accidentally delete, mind you, your driver you just updated. <laughs> okay, so you just gotta, you gotta pay attention. You gotta do it in the correct order. If you uninstall something, wait a minute and see if IOBit uninstaller pops up saying, hey, there's files that didn't del uh, didn't get deleted all the way. So you wanna proceed to doing that. Go ahead and do that. Then proceed to either reinstalling whatever program you had trouble installing or uninstalling or um, driver updates or what the fuck ever you're using it for. So I'm saying, so software health, no. <laughs> Notify me when updates are available. Now, right here, update manually. Okay, awesome. For general update manually. Manually. That way we don't get bothered by, hey, there's a, there's a software update. Hey, I didn't want you to tell me until I ran the program. All right, so hit OK, and we're done. And as a bonus for you all, especially for all you streamers and game recorders or video recorders or video editors hell even people that might want to download movies download music pretty much play any sort of entertainment on their newly built computer we're going to get what's called a codec pack 
Mac that I personally use. And like I said, they're extremely useful, especially since for one, they're free. Two, they're extremely useful for video encoding and video editors uh, specifically, as well as playback of all your file formats. Now, I know what you might be thinking. Well, why can't I just download VLC player? That's like a player that has pretty much all the codecs in existence that can pretty much play any format in existence. Yeah, you could, but you might run into situations where it actually can't play certain files correctly, and having a separate codec pack installed on your system is really helpful, especially when the codecs will apply to any media player and any video editing application that you want it to be used with automatically anyway so like i said the one i use just go to a website called codecguide.com and it's the k light codec pack is what it's called so under here k light codec pack you click on download and it tells you what all it has what i always download because there's different ones here is basic standard full and mega and i always get the mega that way i have plenty of video and audio codecs necessary for any of my video editing applications and any type of file playback and it also comes with a well classic it's a classic windows media player that far outshines the original windows media player so download mega you click download mega and then i usually use the hosted by major geek so i click on this one the server three and then right here it's in the middle here under download now you click on download at major geeks and then wait a minute and then save it and then you click on it run it you can do normal or advanced i usually just do normal so click on next preferred video player and preferred audio player this is completely up to you i like the media player classic player settings create file associations have this box the only one that should be checked and then amount of components to install essentials plus extras or you can just do everything which is what i usually do <laughs> so amount of components to install everything so i'll do everything and right here install vfw codex for video encoding this i was talking about it's for video editors out there if you're using adobe premiere pro or davinci resolve it helps those applications run more efficiently so click on next keep all this at default next next keep everything at default except for this screen Go ahead and select the MPEG2 on this too. All of this will automatically select stuff based on your hardware. So keep everything the same here except for go ahead and, ahead and checking MPEG-2. Next, next, next. And then you got to pay attention as always. Additional software would you like to install yada 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 network? No, you hit decline and now you hit install. Pretty much all there is to it. Restart your computer and... <laughs> You're good to go. And there you have it. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't done so. Like the video if you found it extremely helpful, extremely in-depth, and extremely informative and educational, I guess. And make sure to smash that like button if I didn't already say that. I think I already said that. And also share it because doing both those things helps the computer algorithm push out videos and helps the channel as a whole. And um, yeah, that's uh, all there is to it. Start to finish. Everything else that you need to install on your computer, like your games, your mods, your trainers, and... Um, your uh, digital stores, Microsoft Store is always shown, but like your Steam program and Battle.net or Epic Games Launcher, all that type of stuff, whatever, you're on your own with. I'm sure you know how to operate with them. Windows actually have to, how to use a computer, so you can install everything else on your own, your games and everything. So, peace out. See you in the next one.